on the Hawkeye Sports Network. From Learfield, Hawkeye Baseball is on the air. Hawkeye Baseball is brought to you by Homewood and Home 2 Suites, preferred hotel of the Hawkeye Radio Network, Iowa's Corn Farmers of the Iowa Corn Growers Association, and the Iowa Corn Promotion Board. When corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Oak Knoll, an active life care community by University of Iowa Healthcare, changing medicine, changing lives. And by Wimmer's Meats, the official hot dog of the Hawkeyes. Now live, this is Iowa Hawkeye Baseball. From the campus of the University of Iowa, it's baseball time in Iowa City. Live from Dwayne Banks Field, it's game one of the weekend series opener between the Maryland Terrapins and the 25th ranked Iowa Hawkeyes. Welcome to the broadcast booth alongside my fine color analyst, John Evans. I'm John Leo. Happy Friday, Hawkeye fans. Conference play is finally here, and the Hawkeyes welcome in preseason conference favorite Maryland for a three-game set. We'll try and dodge the storms that are predicted for Eastern Iowa this afternoon. We'll try to get this one in. The Terps come to Iowa City with a 15-9 and record, but don't let that fool you. Maryland has played fourth-ranked Ole Miss four times, only beat them once. They've played powerhouse Vanderbilt, dropping that game by one run. But the Terps are winners of 11 of their last 13, and they arrive in Iowa City battle-tested. It's the premier conference matchup of the weekend. Iowa looking to rebound after a surprising loss to Illinois State in the midweek. It's the conference opener in 2023. Two of the best teams in the league will battle it out in Iowa City. It's the Terrapins and the Hawkeyes, Maryland and Iowa, live from Dwayne Banks Field with first pitch coming up in a bit. Well, the Hawks couldn't hold off Illinois State in normal on Tuesday, but a few highlights from that one. First pitch to Honar. Drives this deep to left center. It's carrying well. Get going, baby. It is gone. Sam Honar. Home run. Boom. Two balls and a strike. The pitch from Anthony. This one's drilled. Deep center. Huxdorf going back. Still running. He's at the track. And he leaps. He's got it. He caught it at the wall. Two down. Huxdorf got it at the wall. The 3-1. Ground ball to Seegers at short. He gloves it. He flips it to Honar. Got him at second. Yes. Sinisco looks in for the sign. Doesn't even check Tello at second. Here's one down the line and left. It is fair ball to the wall. Tello's going to score. Petey with an RBI double. Hawks lead 3-0. Yes. Here's the 1-2 pitch. Ground ball to Seegers at short. He throws it home. It is accurate. Moss picked it out at home. Yes. Got him! Hawks weren't able to hold off the Redbirds, end up losing 5-3 after Illinois State scored three runs in the bottom of the eighth inning. Iowa dropped that one, fell to 19-4 on the season, but we've turned the page and we're ready for a three-game series with the Terps. Coming up after this break, we'll talk with Jack Suzanin of the Maryland Baseball Network. That's coming up on pregame coverage as it continues right after this break. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. When you're in the Eastern Iowa area, be sure to visit and connect with the official local business partners of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The Hotel at Kirkwood Center, Iowa's premier luxury hotel. The Jill Armstrong team with Skoglin Realty, the area's premier realtor, and Options Exteriors, your preferred local roofing and exterior company. The Hotel Kirkwood, named the Corridor Business Journal's 2022 Best Banquet and Event Venue, and awarded the AAA Four Diamond Award for Lodging. To make reservations, visit the Hotel at Kirkwood.com or call 877-751-5111 for more information. We all love a good win. Catching up with friends, saving money at the pump, soaking up the perfect Iowa day, sitting down to a really, really good meal. These are the everyday delights that make us smile. These are the moments that connect us all as Iowans. And these are the wins that, more often than not, start with Iowa's farm families and the crop they're growing. Because when corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Learn more about how to share your own wins at iowacorn.org backslash Iowans win. At U.S. Cellular, we think phones are great, but they're not always great for us. Because while they connect us to so much, they can also distract us from, well, us. The us that actually laughs out loud with each other instead of just texting it. That knows being in the same room doesn't always mean being together. 
So let's find us again by putting our phones down. Not forever, just for five. Five days, five hours, even five minutes. Join U.S. Cellular and the Phones Down for Five Challenge. Find out more at uscellular.com slash find us. This year, we considered hiring an ad agency to help with our marketing. They pitched impressive visuals and a script that was inspiring. And exotic animal mascots to help grab your attention. In the end, we just decided to tell it to you straight. Shelter Insurance has award-winning customer service at affordable rates. Plus, our local agents are there to help you understand what coverage you need. To find an agent near you, visit shelterinsurance.com and switch today. Welcome back to pregame coverage of Iowa Hawkeye Baseball this afternoon. It's Iowa and Maryland in the Big Ten Conference opener from Dwayne Banks today. We're joined by Jack Suzannon of the Maryland Baseball Network. Jack, thanks for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me. Happy to be here. All right, you made the trip all the way out from, from College Park to be here today. The, the Terps 15-9 and nine on the season. Uh, as Hawkeyes, we can't let that record fool us at all. You guys are actually having a really good season, tough schedule so far. Yeah, it was interesting. The coaching staff obviously coming off the Big Ten regular season title last year and hosting a regional for the first time in program history. They wanted to do things bigger and better and really get prepared to not only host a regional but to win a regional even. So that was their mindset behind playing such a tough schedule, obviously having to go to Old Miss where they lost two out of three. Next weekend after that they played a tournament series in Minnesota the Cambria Classic where they played Ole Miss again, Vanderbilt and Hawaii so they got swept there. So it was just a tough start to the season against some really good teams. But they started to bounce back they won two out of three against a really good UCF team in Orlando this past weekend and they're hoping to get hot uh, coming into Big Ten play. Uh, you guys have won 11 of your last 13. What, what's what been the, the turning point for that? Has it been offense or pitching? It's been a little bit of both the pitching, uh, especially the bullpen, struggled a bit to start the season. That's sort of gotten better as of late. And the offense, especially at the start of the year, they really struggled bringing guys home. They were getting guys on base pretty consistently, but the, the average on base wasn't exactly where the team wanted. They struggled with that last Friday night at UCF in a 4-2 loss. But now they're really starting to string hits together, and Matt Shaw, the shortstop, big prospect for the MLB draft, is getting really hot right now, which is really dangerous for opposing teams. Yeah, offensively, uh, you guys lead the conference in walks drawn and, and home runs, which today with the wind blowing out could be a, an interesting development, right? But I, I think the way I look at it is the, the drawn walks is actually maybe the bigger statistic. Yeah, it's definitely interesting. There are some guys who struggled with strikeouts last year. Look at a guy like Bobby Zamarzlak, who's probably going to be starting in left field today for Maryland. He struggled a lot with strikeouts last year, but he's taking a lot more pitches now, not being as much of a free swing this year and of course it all starts with Lou Schlager at the top of the lineup the catcher the captain for this Maryland team is really good at getting on base whatever me by whatever means uh, and that includes the walk uh, on the mound today uh, Jason Savakul what do you know about him so Savakul is interesting he started last year as the Sunday starter behind Nick Dean and Ryan Ramsey Ramsey drafted by the Kansas City Royals last year so he's playing professional ball Nick Dean we're gonna see tomorrow Savakul you know wasn't the heralded prospect of that big three last year, but he is really just rocketed onto the scene. Hasn't been getting the run support, so the record isn't necessarily where he wants it to be, but, you know, that guy, he throws hard, and his off-speed stuff, when it's on, they call him the doctor because he just prescribes where pitches, wherever he wants them to go, it works for him, and he's really, really good at just, really just getting guys out. That's what he does best. Jack Suzannon of the Maryland Baseball Network on our pregame show from Dwayne Banks today. Okay, uh, how do you see the Hawkeyes in, in your mind? What, what are some things that stand out about Iowa to you? Well, it's interesting. I talked to Maryland coach Rob Vaughn about this, about how coming into the year, Maryland was the team that was supposed to be the hunted. Well, now the first week of the season, they're coming in as the underdog against a really good Iowa team. I think, you know, a lot of people in Maryland, you obviously see the record and the win against LSU and all these, you know, big time wins. Obviously, Brody Brecht on the mound is a guy that's going to catch a lot of headlines. So it's definitely interesting for Maryland fans to see, you know, another really strong Big Ten team that maybe didn't have as high of expectations as, you know, the performing. Obviously, last year, Maryland was in that situation, was picked, I believe, fourth in the Big Ten, ended up winning the thing. So it's just interesting to see a team that Maryland had a really good start to the non-con season last year, and Iowa, obviously, this year as well had that. So sort of a team that was 
is doing this year what Maryland did last year. Good perspective there. Interesting note. How, how do you see this series playing out? What what maybe benefits Maryland? A high scoring type of series or low scoring pitchers duel? It's it's interesting because it depends on the pitcher for sure. Obviously, Jason Savickle, he's been in a lot of pitchers duels, but you're hoping to see a lot of runs put up in support of him. He, he can get guys out for sure. Only gave up three runs in his last start against UCF. Struck out Ben McCabe, who's been one of the best catchers in the country. Struck him out three times. So Savickle's a guy who's going to get you know, a lot of outs probably won't be a high-scoring game today, even with the wind blowing out, obviously, two-star pitchers on the mound. But then look at the next couple of games. Maryland has been really hitting the ball well to support guys like Nick Dean and then Kyle McCoy. So it'll be interesting to see Maryland can win in a lot of ways. It, you don't want to put a definitive style on it. All right, Jake, Jack, thanks for your time. I uh, wish you the best of luck the rest of the way after this. Thank you very much, John. I'll see you. Jack Suzanne of the Maryland Baseball Network on our pregame show from Iowa City. Up next, we'll talk with head coach of the Hawkeyes, Rick Heller, as pregame coverage continues. We're back after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Woo! Got my nachos, got my big TV, and my favorite chair. It's game time. But you know, the only thing that would make it a little better is if I could listen to my local broadcasters while watching the game. Oh, hello. You must have wished for your game to be synced with TV and radio. I sure did. Do you have a DVR? You bet. Do you have a streaming device? Yeah. Blammo. Your game is now synced. It's that easy. Oh, boy. To see if you can get synced, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. SyncMyGame.com? SyncMyGame.com. At U.S. Cellular, we think phones are great, but they're not always great for us. Because while they connect us to so much, they can also distract us from, well, us. The us that actually laughs out loud with each other instead of just texting it. That knows being in the same room doesn't always mean being together. So let's find us again by putting our phones down. Not forever, just for five. Five days, five hours, even five minutes. Join U.S. Cellular in the Phones Down for Five Challenge. Find out more at uscellular.com slash find us. Knowing that I can make a difference in my patients' lives keeps me motivated every single day. Hi, I'm Dr. Kanya Ferguson at University of Iowa Healthcare. With academic medicine, we see the toughest cases, so we're always innovating. And we bring the best minds together to collaborate, so there's more brain power focused on you. Because that leads to exceptional care for our patients and our community. See how at UIHC.org. Hey everyone, I'm Mark Wahlberg and I have some exciting news to share. At Wahlburgers, we are all about bringing the family together to enjoy a great meal and have a great time. That's why right now, for a limited time, kids eat free every day at all Hy-Vee Wahlburger locations. Kids 12 and under can enjoy one free kids meal with any purchase of an adult burger, sandwich, or entree salad. Bring the family to Wahlburgers and the Wahlburgers and Hy-Vee stores where right now, kids can eat free. Welcome back to pregame coverage of Iowa Hawkeye Baseball. Today it's the series opener with Maryland, conference opener as well. We welcome in the Terps and we welcome in Coach Heller, the head coach of the Hawkeyes, on our pregame show. Coach, just a, a final thought on, on the game with Illinois State this week. Um, you know, kind of a bad taste in your mouth after that one. Um, it was uh, a game where really in two innings we were really sloppy. You know, we were, we were, we gave them uh, a couple free bases to start the inning in the fourth that ended up two runs um, we still had the three to two lead and you know Sam Honar hit a hit a big home run early you know the bats weren't really going either team um, and they threw a couple guys at us uh, a couple left-handers that had been weekend starters highly successful in the past but had been floundering a little bit so they they threw them in the midweek game and and unfortunately for us they came out and pitched really well uh, no, you know a little better than what we were expecting uh, on the Tuesday night and then Throw in the fact that you know we had three, three to two lead. It looked like one of those games you're going to have to win three to two. And generally, when we have a lead after the sixth, seventh inning, the game's over. And uh, unfortunately, we went out and 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 played sloppy in the eighth. Some free bases, messed up a bunt coverage, and uh, the next thing you know, we're down uh, five to three. And and they brought in their closer, and we even had some bad luck, uh, bad luck in the last at bat. You know, it was crazy. Um, had a runner second and, um, you know, tying run at the plate and Sam Honar, who had homered earlier, and Sam hit a ball about 110 miles an hour that hit the pitcher in the ankle and ricocheted right to the first baseman who's standing on the base to end the game. So, you know, it wasn't your night when stuff yeah. like that happens, but 
Um, you know, we, 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 we had a couple good practices this week. I feel good about where our heads are and, um, you know, heading into conference play here. Um, you know, we, we, we drew a tough one. You know, we have Maryland right mm-hmm. off the bat, uh, last year's champion, and, you know, probably a, a missed call away from being in a super regional last year. And, um, and then, um, you know, they're the preseason favorite this year. So very, very formidable opponent, t- talented team, well coached. Uh, just a thought, uh, how do you get Will Christofferson back on track? Or has he just had a couple of rough outings? Well, I, I think um, not pitching midweek, the Grandview week, uh, kind of threw Will's timing off. Um, I like for Will, once he's going good, to just keep getting him out there consistently. And he needs to do a better job at being able to, to be ready, obviously, as well. I mean, when that happens, because you can't control that a lot of the time. Um, I was really I was really pleased with how Will bounced back in his first inning. You know, hindsight 2020, um, I wish I would have gotten him out, you know, after the positive good inning in the seventh. Um, but the plan was, you know, if he if Will was Will needed to work, obviously, after the last time and we wanted to get him out there. And then um, he didn't handle uh, things very well in the eighth once um, we, we blew the bunt coverage and things started going fast. And that's when the free bases started happening. And he didn't stop it. And it was it was too late uh, because Lou Allen's been throwing so well. And, you know, Henderson's been throwing so well. Uh, the plan was to get two out of Will because he needed to work. And then, you know, Louie come in and, and close the door in the ninth. And uh, it just didn't work out. You know, like I said, hindsight, um, looking back at it, you know, you, you, you I wish I would have probably taken him out after the one and just um, left it on a positive. But that one inning that he threw in the seventh was dominating yeah. just like the Will that we've seen all season long. And I think that's who we'll see, um, you know, when we use Will this weekend. I don't want to fixate on it, but uh, uh, just the way the game played out on, on Tuesday, very strange, especially with those kind of pitch clock and batter clock type of calls yeah. that we saw. Yeah, it was frustrating because, um, you know, it was the first time in 20-plus games that we had an umpire that interpreted the clock rule uh, the way he did. You know, it was, in my opinion, not the way you're supposed to interpret it, but that's the way he interpreted it. And Illinois State um, – what they would do is as soon as the catcher caught the ball, he would snap the ball back to the pitcher as fast as he could. The pitcher would be standing on the rubber. And as soon as it hit his glove, the umpire would start the clock. And, you know, technically, I guess by the letter of the law, um, that is what they're supposed to do once they're on the rubber, ready to pitch, start the clock. But I've heard all the other umpires we've talked to when teams tried to do that. It's like they would wait, pause two or three seconds before they started it um, because normally a pitcher will take a step, catch the ball, walk up, get on the mound, then the clock stops. So the timing is proper for the hitter. And Mm -hmm. what they were doing was trying to speed the game up for our hitters. And unfortunately, they had an umpire who was letting that happen. And uh, weird, weird game that way. Weird game. Talking with the head coach of the Hawkeyes, Rick Heller, on our pregame show from Dwayne Banks today. Okay, conference opener, the, the non-conference is behind us. You, you feel like your team's in a good spot as we get ready for Big Ten play. Well, I feel like um, some things are in a good spot. I feel like our, our, our offense the last two weeks has been really dialed in and not chasing a whole lot out of the zone and, and doing a great job with our swing decisions. And when you do that, you know, you hit a lot of... Hit, hit a lot of extra base hits, you hit balls hard. And, um, you know, when you're not hitting balls hard, you're usually swinging outside the, the white mm-hmm. part of the plate. And uh, it's going to be really important today, you know, when we, when we talk about Savakul and, and, and how to beat him. But so I feel good about that. Um, defensively, I think we're in a pretty good place. Um, you know, pitching, it's kind of some are, some aren't type situation. And I wish I wish a few more were, but, uh, you know, it is what it is at this point. And we're going to have to to keep working through it and get some guys – uh, back on track where they can go out and um, and help us. Um, but for the most part, you know, Brody has been trending in a positive way, and you feel good about him going out there today. And then, you, you, you know, Jared Simpson's been really solid all year. His start last weekend didn't go quite like I thought it would. Um, and he's going to go back to the – to the role that he had that he he was kind of thriving in and he's he's a good guy to bring in after Brody if the game's closer mm-hmm. and we're in the lead uh, just because it's such a different look um, a lot of times when you get a guy like Brody that throws so hard uh, and 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 sliders wicked and then you bring in another right hander that's anything similar but maybe less velo sometimes the hitter psyche or confidence just peaks up even yeah. just because you're changing him and throwing the left hander with some different characteristics that that Jared has on his fastball is a good is a good match, um, and, and so yeah, that's 
That's what I feel. Uh, Maryland's a, a good hitting team. They lead the conference in home runs. But I think what stands out to me is they lead the conference in, in drawing walks. And we talk about free bases a lot, Coach. Can't let that happen this weekend. No, that's for sure. And, um, you know, their hitting coach, Matt Shaw, does a great job. Really good hitting coach and, um, you know, real similar uh, plan and approach uh, as we're trying to, to, to achieve with our guys. And it's just like you said, you know, we want to limit the strikeouts and, um, you know, walk hit by pitches more than we strike out and just really force the pitcher's hand and, and get his pitch count up if he's not if he's not hitting the zone or if he's nibbling. And uh, they, they have a very similar approach. And uh, so Brody's going to have to pound that strike zone. And the, the one thing, you know, I will say is, don't get me wrong, um, they've got some big-time hitters in the lineup. And, you know, Coach McGrath and I were talking uh, this week, and, you know, Sean was saying, you know, they, they probably have five guys who are going to play pro baseball in this lineup. And, and older older guys, mature guys, guys that have been through a lot. Um, but their ballpark is uh, kind of a launching pad, and mm -hmm. it's real short in center field. And so take the home run totals with a grain of salt, uh, you know, to, unfortunately, though, today, normally at Banks, I would be like, all right, you know, because the wind <laughs> usually blows in this time of year. But um, with the noon start before the storms come in, the wind is howling out. I mean, it is blowing 30 mile an hour straight out today. So uh, we're going to have to keep the ball down and, and limit the freebies and, and you know, play play really good defense uh, behind our pitchers today so that if a ball happens to get blown out in the wind, it's, it's not a two or three run home run. Just a quick note on there pitcher today coach um Savakul, he's an all-american i mean all-american last year first team all big 10 he was their guy um he's he has epitomized what a friday night guy is and and it's his his, his stuff is really good but his intangibles are even better i mean he's a tough kid really tough kid competes hard um he's got a lot of different pitches he, he's got a you're going to see primarily his fastball is going to be a two seam with some sink to it and he's going to run that at 90 91 and then whenever you see on the board John, that it's in that 93, 94 range. That's his four seam fastball that he'll use uh, occasionally. Um, sliders, his go to pitch and his out pitch. Um, also throws a change, not a lot. And then you'll see him randomly throw a real slow overhand curveball in there just to try to steal strikes, that, hoping guys won't swing at it. Um, but. You know, we got a, we have a good plan. Uh, Marty Sellerlin, our hitting coach, has, has really um, done a great job of scouting him, and I think we have a really solid plan to to attack him. And uh, if we can get him from, uh, you know, if we can get our guys to stay out of that chase, then we're going to have to raise the floor on this guy. That's the plan. Is you know anything below your mid thighs with the sink and his his change up profile is very similar to his two seam where it sinks. Uh, so. We were going to have to raise the floor and get the ball up. And, and sometimes with a sinker ball guy uh, like Savakul, the, when the wind blows this direction, it kind of messes with them a little bit because maybe it doesn't sink as much with the wind coming into their face. Or sometimes it even makes it, you know, the wind can do funny things to the ball uh, when it's blowing as hard as it is. And hopefully that maybe would throw him off a little. Uh how do you sense the excitement level of the guys? Conference play, wow, it's Maryland coming in here, finally been at home. You sense the guys are juiced up, ready to go. I think we're ready to go, um, for sure. Um, you know, you always worry as a coach when you have to change the schedule. You know, um, you know it's a BTN game, and, um, you know, we were set at 3.30, and then now with the storm, we're moving it up to, to noon, which completely changed your player's day. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they didn't go to class you know, after eight o'clock, mm -hmm. um, batting practice at, you know, 945 and uh, just a completely different day than what you're used to on a Friday. But, you you know, that's the key to 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 being successful in northern baseball and in the Big Ten is that every weekend seems to be similar to this with adjustments and changes. And those teams that can handle that are the ones that um, do well and the ones that don't struggle. And so far, so good with our guys. That's what I told them, that, you know, and with with adjustments that we have to make. I'm betting on you guys. You know, you guys have been able to deal with so much this year already. And, um, you know, just go out and play and do the best you can and not worry about the things you can't control. Let me worry about all that stuff. And you guys just go play. And I felt a uh, good vibe with the guys um, when we when we were going through pregame this morning. Coach, just before we let you go, a couple of keys to victory to knock off Maryland today. Um, kind of hit on most of them. Just raise the floor with Savakul, and, 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 and hopefully you'll see us really spitting on um, you know, the breaking balls out of the zone. Hopefully the umpire is an umpire that's not giving him a lot out of the zone because he'll be able to thrive on that. So that's one we can't control but may have to adapt to as the game goes on. Um, Brody giving us a great start and limiting the free bases. And if he does that, uh, we'll be in a good place. And 
hopefully we have a lead and hand the ball over to Jared Simpson and, and let him go as long as he can and, and uh, close it out at the back end. But like we talked about, free bases today are, are, are magnified with um, the way the wind's blowing out of here. All right, Coach, thanks for your time. Let's win the day. Take down the Terps. All right, thanks, John. Head coach of the Hawkeyes, Rick Heller, on our pregame show from Dwayne Banks. Moments away from first pitch. We're back right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At Oak Knoll, our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at oaknoll.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! Hey everyone, I'm Mark Wahlberg and I have some exciting news to share. At Wahlburgers, we are all about bringing the family together to enjoy a great meal and have a great time. That's why right now, for a limited time, kids eat free every day at all Hy-Vee Wahlburger locations. Kids 12 and under can enjoy one free kids meal with any purchase of an adult burger, sandwich, or entree salad. Bring the family to Wahlburgers and the Wahlburgers and Hy-Vee stores where right now, kids can eat free. Welcome back to Dwayne Banks Field in Iowa City. It's the conference opener, the series opener between Iowa and Maryland. Let's bring in color analyst John Evans. John, good to see you again. Let's uh, get after the Terps here this weekend, huh? Good morning, almost afternoon, John. Yeah, it's uh, we've got a little bit of a window here. Hopefully it's... Uh, <laughs> Hopefully it's a big enough window to get a baseball game into. Boy, it's a bit of a shame, this weather forecast for the afternoon. Looks like 3 or 4 o'clock, Eastern Iowa really under the gun when it comes to the severe weather. So we'll try to get this one in today. But it's a shame because the, the crowd is affected by the weather forecast. Well, yeah, you move a game up from uh, from a good 4 o'clock start on Friday to, to noon on Friday. And, and, you know, one, the short notice change uh, makes it difficult and then just of course, noon on a Friday makes it makes it even more difficult to see, uh, you know, a, a first team All-American and, you know, a potential first round draft pick uh, in 2024 on the Iowa side. So, you know, great, what could be a great pitching matchup and uh, uh, we won't uh, we won't get the fans here that, that maybe we'd like to see. We'll continue with our conversation in just a minute, but let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is Iowa Hawkeye baseball. We'll step aside for today's national anthem when we come back. It'll be starting lineups, batting orders, and first pitch. Iowa and Maryland from Dwayne Banks. We're back right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. After a cancer diagnosis, it's natural to want to start treatment right away. But first, get a second opinion from a team that specializes in your cancer. I'm Dr. George Wiener, Director of University of Iowa Holden Comprehensive Cancer Center. Before you start treatment, you deserve to be confident you have the right diagnosis and know every option available to you. So whether it's with us or somewhere else, get a second opinion. It can change your care and your life. Woo! Got my nachos, got my big TV, and my favorite chair. It's game time. But you know, the only thing that would make it a little better is if I could listen to my local broadcasters while watching the game. Ah. Hello. You must have wished for your game to be synced with TV and radio. I sure did. Do you have a DVR? You bet. Do you have a streaming device? <laughs> yeah. Blammo. Your game is now synced. It's that easy. Oh, boy. To see if you can get synced, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. SyncMyGame.com? SyncMyGame.com. National Anthem is complete here in Iowa City. Moments ahead of first pitch between Iowa and Maryland. Game one of the three-game series. Going to try to get this one in before the storms come into play this afternoon. Sun starting to shine, which is a little bit uh, dangerous when it comes to severe weather. But let's move off the weather and let's get to starting lineups and batting orders for today's game. We'll start with the Maryland Terrapins. Maryland 15-9. and nine. 
overall. Head coach of the Terps is Rob Vaugh in his sixth season. They're led off by Luke Schliger. He's their catcher. He's in the leadoff spot. Nick LaRusso bats second. Matt Shaw is their shortstop batting third. In the cleanup spot is Matt Woods out in right field. Kevin Keister is their second baseman batting fifth. Ian Petrutz is their designated hitter batting sixth. Eddie Hakopian is their first baseman batting seventh. And in the 8-9 spot, Jacob Orr, Elijah Lambros. The Hawkeyes defensively will have Derigi at first. Sam Honar at second, Michael Seegers at short. At third base is Raider Tello. In the outfield, Sam Peterson in left, Kyle Huxdorf in center, and Braden Frazier is in right. Doing the catching today for Iowa is Cade Moss. And on the mound for the Hawkeyes, the Friday starter, Brody Brecht. Brody Brecht, 2-1 and one on the season, a 2.20 ERA. This will be his seventh start, 28 and two-thirds innings, giving up just 14 hits, seven runs. 21 walks, though, 46 strikeouts, opponents hitting just 146. You heard Coach Heller mention the key for Brody is going to be he's got to get ahead. Uh, not only does that help, obviously, attack hitters, but you know, for him it's, it's getting deeper into games. You know, five and two-thirds is that, is that mark so far. Got to get him into the sixth, seventh inning. To, uh, not that Jared Simpson's not a great compliment afterwards, but just really like to see Brody be able to, to stretch himself out a little bit. Last time we saw Brody, uh, he really was on. He had his stuff, but the pitch count was a little bit too high, which prevented him from going deeper into the game. And that's, you know, it's for Brody, it's it's not only strike one, but then it's, it's you know, finishing the hitters off efficiently, you know, not not letting those counts get 2-2, two, 3-2, two, two, um, you know, so frequently, and especially against a, a lineup like Maryland who's, who's looking to draw a walk, looking to make sure they force the pitchers into the white part of the plate so that they can get a pitch they can drive. Um, you know, it's going to be important to try to get ahead so that, that Brody can really dictate the at-bat. These teams headed for a collision course, and it, it starts uh, early on, the first conference series of the season. Uh, let's just go over some of Maryland's hitting and batting stats. As a team, they're a 295 hitting team, seventh in the Big Ten. They're first in the conference in home runs. They've hit 47 of them, but the big stat is drawing the walks. They've drawn 154 walks, which is first in the Big Ten. Got to watch the free bases today, but Iowa counters on the flip side with the best ERA uh, when, when it comes to the pitching staff with a 3.93 team ERA, first in the Big Ten. 262 strikeouts as a staff, also first in the Big Ten, so something's going to give this weekend. And Maryland does strike. They've struck out 171 times also, so a lot of times when you're working counts deep, you know, you also strike out. So that's where it'll be. Who wins 3-2? Who wins 2-2? Those big payoff pitches. First pitch from Brody Brecht is fouled in the box. The batter is Luke Schliger. He's their catcher. He's a uh, left-handed hitter. And, and this is another one of those guys. I think Coach Heller mentioned five guys being able to play at the next level. Slider breaks inside for a ball, one and one. You know, number one ranked catcher here by... Division One baseball and, and second team All Big Ten last year, so um, you know obviously obviously knows what he's doing offensively and defensively. One one from Breck, chopped foul to the Iowa batter, uh, Iowa dugout to the right side. It's one and two, wind blowing out to left center today, stretching the flags taut on their poles. One ball, two strikes. Pitch from Breck. That's just low and in. Ball two. Really good pitch there. As we know we've talked about Brody trying to get that that back foot pitch a little bit, get a swing and miss right over the top. Just couldn't quite get the chase. 2-2. Two -two, heart of the plate. Called third strike. Got him with the slider for the first out of the game. I'm not sure what uh, Sligger's puzzled about. That one was right down the middle of the plate, knee high. and um, He'll be really angry if his pitcher doesn't get pitches like that all day. So, yeah. Easy, uh, easy call for the home plate umpire. One down in the inning. Here's Nick LaRusso, right-handed hitter. First pitch is low. Brody started him with off speed. The Terps are in road red uniforms, resembling the Cincinnati Reds, I would say. Ooh. Red tops, white pants. 1-0 pitch from Brecht is on the outside corner, 1-1. One one. They wear red batting helmets. They've got their logo over their heart on their chest. 
One ball, one strike. Brecht is ready the pitch. Swing and a miss. It's one and two. Hawkeyes will counter with all white uniforms. Hawkeyes spelled out in black block lettering across the chest with gold outline. White baseball pants. Black baseball caps in the field with the block I gold logo on the front. One, two pitch. Just outside. And it's two and two. I dotted it with 101. Just barely missed. You know, this is another good hitter. This is second team or first team all Big Ten last year. Um, you know, was all regional team, which again is kind of that reminder of uh, you know Maryland got to a place where Iowa wanted to get last year. You know, Maryland hosted a regional, um, which might have been my, that part might have been a little bit of an upset, but but getting there wasn't. Yeah. Two balls, two strikes. Pitch from Brecht, swing and a miss. Got him again. Two down, two strikeouts in the inning for Brody. Good work there, and again, he's he's gotten ahead, hasn't really let the counts extend too far, um, you know, with a 1-2 and a 2-2 two -two finish, so really important there, and he's going to face one of the best hitters in the country right here, Matt Shaw. Shaw's their three-hitter. We, we talk about the two-out hitting that Iowa does offensively. First pitch to Shaw is outside for a ball, and, and then on the flip side, the, the pitching side of things, when we get them down with two outs, let's finish them off right away. Don't let this inning go any longer, right? Right. Finish the finish the inning. Finish the at bat. 1-0 pitch is low, and it's two and zero. You know, just a little bit on Shaw. You know, he was. Uh, you know, we've talked about the Cape Cod League here in Iowa City because obviously with Adam Major being out there, and then this year with Zach Volker and Ty Langenberg. He misses outside there, three and zero. Shaw was Shaw was actually the Cape Cod League MVP on the offensive side, so. Um, you know, we, we like to, to promote the Iowa players' success. Well, here's one uh, one of the opposing teams with a ton of success. 3-0 pitch is up and in, and there's a walk. So couldn't quite finish the finish the inning there. First walk of the day. A couple of strikeouts to start. Free base for Maryland in the first. The first three, you know, the first three pitches of the at bat were maybe maybe Brody almost accepting the challenge too much. That was a that was a pretty good pitch. Just uh, after you've been all over the place, you, umpire's eyes aren't really trained in for you to get that one. So Brecht goes to the stretch, offering a first pitch strike on the inside corner to the right fielder, Matt Woods. He's a left-handed hitter, taps the plate with his bat a couple of times and stands in for the 0-1 from Brecht. Here it comes. That's low. Moss will backhand it and stop it, 1-1. One you know, Woods hitting 333 on the year. He's from Bryant University, so actually, actually not a first team All Big Tenner last year. <laughs> One of the few, huh? It seems that way as we run through the top of the lineup so far. All NEC first team though, so fouled back to the screen on the 1-1, one -one, and so Brecht is in an advantageous position now. One ball, two strikes, with two outs in the top of the first. And the big part about you know, the walk is four pitches, so it's not the end of the world, but it's that it's the the you know it's another at bat. You know you've got to go that much longer to strike him out there and get out of the inning. Well, Brecht gets three strikeouts. There's a walk mixed in there, but so far so good from the Hawkeye ace. We'll head to the bottom of the first. We'll get you Iowa's batting order right after this. This is Hawkeye baseball from Learfield. We all love a good win, catching up with friends, saving money at the pump. Soaking up the perfect Iowa day, sitting down to a really, really good meal. These are the everyday delights that make us smile. These are the moments that connect us all as Iowans. And these are the wins that, more often than not, start with Iowa's farm families and the crop they're growing. Because when corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Learn more about how to share your own wins at iowacorn.org backslash Iowans win. You probably know that a natural gas leak smells like rotten eggs, but what does a gas leak look or sound like? If you hear a whooshing or hissing sound, see dirt, dust, or water spraying from an area, or you get dizzy or queasy, leave the area immediately, then call 1-800-595-5325 once you're safely away. See midamericanenergy.com for more safety tips. Paid for by the customers of MidAmerican Energy. Good start for the Hawkeyes in the series opener with Maryland. They put down the Terps with three strikeouts in the first. The batting order for the Hawkeyes today will look pretty similar to 
how it's looked all season. Michael Seegers, the shortstop, will lead things off, followed by Kyle Huxdorf and Brennan DeRiggi. Keaton Anthony is the designated hitter, batting fourth. Raider Tello at third, bats fifth. Batting six for the Hawkeyes today is Sam Peterson out in left. Seven, eight, nine, Sam Honar, Cade Moss, Braden Frazier. The pitcher for the Terps today, Jason Savakul. Savakul, three and three on the season, be making his seventh start as well. 268 ERA, 37 innings, 28 hits, 14 runs, 11 earned, great control, just nine walks, 39 strikeouts. Opponents hitting 203. Don't let the three and three record cool, fool you. Savakul is a stud. Uh, you know, first team All Big Ten, third team All American, twelfth in twelfth uh, in Maryland history and wins. Uh, he, he's the real deal. And so, Iowa bats are going to have to rebound from uh, uh, maybe a little lackluster showing midweek and and get back onto that uh, good track they'd been on prior to that. Feel really confident in the Iowa offense. First pitch is a called strike on the outside corner from the Maryland right-handed pitcher. When we talked with Coach Heller earlier, uh, he, he's got uh, a lot of two-seam tail, sinker ball pitcher. 0-1 to Seegers. Uh, called strike on the outside corner again, 0-2. And when we watch Savakul's wind up in delivery, it's very quick. Everything's really rapid on its way home. A little bit, uh, I won't call it jerky because it's yeah. smooth, but it is. He isn't fooling around. He's coming right at it, and then, you know, the ball jumps out. He said fastball is 90, 90 90-plus, but then a really good breaking ball, slider change. He's got kind of the whole mix, just what you'd expect out of a a solid starter like that. One ball, two strikes. Pitch to Seegers. That's low and out. Ball two. Trying to get Michael to chase that slider, but too far out of the zone. Seegers has been taken all the way. He's taken two strikes, taken two balls. Kick off the bottom of the first. Time to cue one up into left center. Yeah, if he can get a strike, that'd be nice. Three balls and two strikes now as this one kicks off the catcher's right shin guard, and it's three and two. You know, Savakul has more experience than Brody does in, you know, getting longer into games. But, you know, just like we mentioned with Brody, 0-2, you go on to finish that batter off, and instead he goes four four straight balls and walks him. Um, that's, that's a huge deal. I, you know, pitch count, all of that stuff, obviously the walk, um, is the bonus for Iowa, but just you know, when you get ahead 0-2 and you're the quality of pitcher of Savakul, Brody Brack, you gotta you gotta seal that up and finish it off. Here's Kyle Huxdorf, the two hitter, with Seegers at first. Iowa with more stolen bases so far this season than they had all of last year. First pitch to Huck, breaking ball just low for a ball, and Savakul's missed on five in a row now. Good pitch there, just uh, just broke out of the zone. Yes, uh, Seegers with six stolen bases, so does a good job as they throw over to try to keep him close. But you know, Slickers, the runners are 17 of 20, so they've done a, done a good job. He's got a good lead over there, but Savakul's pretty quick to home as Huckstor fouls this off to the right side, out of play, counts one and one. You, you just kind of imagine, John, that the Hawks, they don't really need extra motivation coming into the, the conference opener with the team that's supposed to win the Big Ten, but just when we left on, on Tuesday with the bad taste in our mouth, losing to Illinois State, got to think that's added fuel to the fire here today. You'd like to think that, you know, there's a response like what happened with Sam Houston, you know, that... that Maybe the team's approach was, uh, you know, maybe they got away from what makes them successful a little bit. And, you know, it happens in a long season. So just that reminder that good pitch there is a breaking ball for a strike. You know, just that reminder of, hey, there's, there's certain things we do that make us successful, not just we show up and we're successful. And so it would be interesting to see how Iowa, um, you know, good read there from Seegers. Yep, ball in the dirt, and Seegers read the downward angle, took off for second. Runner in scoring position for Iowa now for Kyle Huxdorf, who's worked a two and two count. Yeah, this is a this is the tone setter really for the whole for the whole season when you're taking on your co favorite. Um, you know, you win this series, it sets you up for a tiebreaker, it sets you up for all kinds of things that, that Iowa really wants to position themselves for. Savakul set with the two two, chopper back up the middle, weekly hit, shortstop charging hard, bobbled it. Couple are on for the Hawkeyes. Seegers gets to third. Huxdorf is at first with no play. It'll be interesting to see how they score that. Error right away, and that was, uh, you know, the middle infield for Maryland 
has some errors. So, you know, it, it was it's possible to put some pressure on him that way. Um, you know, that's a, a, a tough error call. Probably should have been, but that you're going to have to be almost perfect to throw Huxdorf out with his speed on that ball anyway. Hawkeyes threatening early. Here's Brennan DeRiggy, the transfer from Wofford, the fifth year. Left-handed hitter. Runners on the corners, nobody out. Huck with a good lead at first. First pitch to DeRiggy. He's outside for a ball. Savakul struggling to find the zone in the first. We've seen a lot of teams attack DeRiggy on that outer half. Doesn't seem to phase him much. He just takes his pitches and gets ready to go. 1-0 pitch. That's low ball two. Huxdorf takes off for second. He slides in there without a throw. Iowa aggressive on the base pass to start this one. And that's, you know, we've seen the, you know, we joked about this, the Sunday game against Texas Tech, you know, when Iowa needed to bounce back. They they were um, aggressive to, to almost reckless. And, you know, not that that is, especially with a runner on third there, but just good play, ball sitting there, take off, make them make, them make a decision. 2-0 pitch to DeRiggi. Breaking ball floating in for a strike on the inside corner. Brennan wouldn't want to swing at that one. Two balls and a strike now to the Hawkeye three-hitter. Best average on the team at 369. He's got 10 extra base hits. 2-1 to DeRiggi. Lays off this one. Ball three. Savakul's missed low. And, and you think back to, to Coach Heller's sentiment in the pregame show. Hey, we got to raise the, the floor, right, a little bit, where anything below the thighs, you got to lay off because it's going to drop low. Right. He's going to have balls that just fall out of the zone and, and really even the, the curveball before that. 3-1 to DeRiggi. That's low. Ball four. Bases loaded for Keaton Anthony. Nobody out in the inning. This, this is where, you know, again, we'll, we'll, we'll just we'll vault right into Captain Obvious on the, on the bottom of the first inning here. But, uh, you know, th this is one where one run's not enough. You know, go get two, go get four. You know, pile it on here. Just, you know, take advantage of a, of a little bit of wildness and, and really add to it here. First pitch to Anthony right down the middle, a called strike. Hmm. But Savakul has walked a couple in the inning. Iowa has the bases loaded with nobody out in the bottom of the first. Don't have a hit yet. Nothing in one is the count to Anthony. Pitch on its way. Lifted in the air. Deep left center. Get going, baby. It is gone. Got one now. Ha-ha. <laughs> Keaton Anthony. Grand slam. Boom. Yes. Four to nothing. I said four. We got four. What a what a swing of the bat. Keaton Anthony took the breaking ball, which was a really good breaking ball. Knee high, right in the middle of the plate, though. And Anthony, who's not known to pull it, sends it 105 exit velocity, 401, bouncing it right to the front door of Carver Hawkeye Arena. Smoked it to left center. Even without the wind, I think it was gone, John. Now I think the key is we need to start playing faster. Yeah. <laughs> We Keep need. it going. Here's Raider Tello. First pitch swinging. Grounds one to third. He's got time to throw it across for the first out of the inning. A little bit of a, uh, a look what I found sort of yeah. uh, catching it off to the side ground ball. Yeah, LaRusse's head was looking up to the heavens when he snagged that with his glove. I don't care. I'm still basking in the home run. We barely had time to catch our breath after that one, and Raider was first pitch swinging. That's all right, Raider. Here's Sam Peterson. First pitch to him is low for a ball, 1-0. Oh. Boy, it's it's kind of funny. We talk about the, the free bases hurting our pitching staff. Really hurt Maryland there in the first. 1-0 oh pitch to Petey. That's low again, 2-0. Oh. Savakul falls off the mound, visibly frustrated that he just can't find it yet. Well, and he's been, you know, you watch his body language. You know, he's catching balls behind his back. He's, you know, he's kind of side flipping them. He's, he's not happy right now. 2-0. Oh. Peterson fouls off in the box, 2-1. Hawks up 4 nothing in the bottom of the first, jumping on the Terps early. And I say that, maybe he does that all the time. You know, I haven't watched ton, maybe that's maybe he's very nonchalant when he sure. catches the ball back at the mound. He doesn't seem amused right now. 2-1 to Peterson, lays off that slider, low and away, ball three. You just watch him not swing at that pitch right there. I think maybe three weeks ago, PD offers at that. What do you think? Correct. Yeah. Agreed. 3-1 to Sam. Lifts Ooh. this in the air, deep to left. Get going, baby. This one's long gone. That's a goner. Ha-ha, Petey. Boom. Umpire's uh, 
home plate umpire was having a, uh, uh, after the grand slam, was keep trying to keep the Hawkeye dugout back this time. Uh, John's doing a good job keeping the, keeping the team back down there. But Petey with just a bomb there is. Absolute no doubter to left off the bat of Sam Peterson. For Petey, that's his fifth of the season. And yeah, we'll get a mound visit now as uh, Keaton gets Keaton gets six, and Sam doesn't want him to get too far ahead, so he has to pull back. But <laughs> what a bomb there. Hawks up 5 nothing on Maryland in the first. You talk about run support just in general, always important, crucial, and whatnot. But when you got Brody Brecht on the mound, you, you just get a little breath of fresh air for him. He can take a deep breath and focus in when he gets back out there, whenever that might be. When you send uh, when you send you know, five guys now walking down to the Maryland bullpen on a Friday, Ooh. Um, they, you know, they, it, it's important that Iowa continues to do it and continues to to work on the approach because you know if you can get into the bullpen today, you know Savakul has been. Uh, you know, six starts, 37 innings. He averages over six innings a start. He saves the bullpen for later in the weekend. If you can all of a sudden now have to make them start shuffling pieces around, that's a huge deal for how the rest of the weekend can play out. Mound visit concluded. Here's Sam Honar to keep the inning going for the Hawks. Just one down in the first. Iowa struck five times. A grand slam from Keaton Anthony. And a solo shot from Sam Peterson moments ago. 0-1 pitch to Honar, breaking ball outside, evening the count one and one. Five times with two hits. I mean, that's, the, you know, obviously you've made the most of your two hits, but, but it's the free stuff in between that the Hawks have really taken advantage of. 1-1, one, one, swung on and missed. Slow breaking ball at 81 miles an hour on the outside corner. Honar tried to time it up, missed it. He's down in the count one and two. Cade Moss is on deck for the Hawkeyes. Pitch to Honar. That's low. Ball two. Boy, anything other than the breaking ball has really missed low. It's been the it's been the fastballs and the sinkers that have dropped out of the zone. And he throws that looping curveball kind of just as a strike. 2-2. Two, two. Honar slaps foul to the left side. Out of play. We'll do it again. He's not looking for a ton of swings at that. And Honar had him. Honar was ready for it. Just just missed it. And so um, you saw him throw it to Derigi as well. Just kind of that big, uh, hey, I need a strike. Here it comes. But most most hitters don't want to attack that one. Two balls, two strikes. Pitch to Honar. Swing and a miss. Foul tips it back into the glove. He's out number two. That's still, they've done a nice job. You know, we're, by the time Moss is done hitting here, Savakul will probably have thrown north of 30 pitches here in the first inning. So, mm -hmm. good, uh, good, first, good first time through the through the order for the Hawks and uh, you know walks good patient good patient approach and that's that's when they're at their best first pitch to Cade Moss is a called strike on the outside corner nothing in one next pitch from Savakul on its way that Ooh. bounced way in front of the plate one and one almost looked like he caught his spikes before he got his plant foot all the way forward One ball, one strike, two outs in the first. Hawks up 5 nothing. There's a pitch on the inside corner. One and two to the Hawkeye catcher. Better with that one as that was better location. Yeah. One, two. That hit him. And Moss will limp towards first base. Got him on the left knee. Mmm. Savakul drops down into a crouched position, upset with himself. That Talk about losing somebody right there. That, you got him one and two, and, and you hit him. Moss will take his time down the right field line to try to walk off that one. That one hurt. Well, and let's go back to let's go back to how this inning started. 0-2 on Michael Seegers. Doesn't finish him off, walks him. Ground ball up the middle of the air, but you know, one and two now on on Cade and yeah. You know, while on one hand, I appreciate Cade taking one for the team. On the other hand, I hate having your everyday catcher take a 92-mile-an-hour fastball off the knee. He looks like he's able to shake it off there at first. Jake Feldman, the outstanding athletic trainer for the Hawkeyes, he's out there. Check on Cade. We're good to go. Hawks have batted through in the first. Here's Braden Frazier, the starting right fielder today. 
Right-handed hitter, first pitch to Frazier. Line drive into the gap in left center field. It'll get down for a base hit. Moss round second, heading for third. Center fielder picks it up. They'll stop Cade at third. It's a two-out single from Braden Frazier. You mentioned it in pregame. Coach Marty Sutherland had a little bit of a hunch that that uh, might be a good game for Braden. And, and, I mean, I know one pitch, one at bat doesn't make it a, make it a good game yet, but, boy, he... Barreled that one up, drove it into left center, kept the rally alive, and we're back to the top of the order. Yeah, here's Seegers, and, and that will be a, a good day if, if Michael can keep it going, courtesy of that two-out single from Frazier. Seegers walked and scored earlier in the inning, scored on the grand slam from Keaton Anthony. Runners at the corners with two outs. First pitch to Seegers, breaking ball in on the hands, ball one. It's a little odd, though. The Hawkeyes had a hit that didn't leave the ballpark. Right. Broke that trend. I don't know if we're okay. Are we all right with that? We don't have a choice. It's probably going to happen. <laughs> going to get there at some point. One ball, no strikes. Two down in the hockey eye first. I was played at five. Next pitch to Seegers. Breaking ball called strike. Frazier will take second for free. So now two in scoring position for the Hawkeye leadoff man, getting his second opportunity in the inning. You know, it doesn't seem like a big deal, but you take the force off. You put now another runner in scoring position where if Seegers can just move one out into the outfield grass, a couple more are coming in. 1-1, one, one, hit on the ground to second. Second baseman scoops it up, throws it to first, and that'll do it for the first inning. But a big inning for the Hawkeyes. Five runs come across. Four come in on the Keaton Anthony Grand Slam. And Sam Peterson, he wanted in on the fun, hit a solo shot to make it 5 nothing Hawks. We head to the second. We're back after this. This is a Hawkeye baseball from Learfield. At Oak Mall, our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at oakmall.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! When you're in the Eastern Iowa area, be sure to visit and connect with the official local business partners of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The Hotel at Kirkwood Center, Iowa's premier luxury hotel, the Jill Armstrong team, Wiscogman Realty, the area's premier realtor, and Options Exteriors, your preferred local roofing and exterior company. Jill Armstrong and her team strive to make every buyer and seller at ease with the real estate process. Contact the Jill Armstrong team, Wiscogman Realty, for all of your real estate needs. Call 319-631-5455. This copyrighted broadcast is an exclusive presentation of Learfield under the broadcasting rights granted by the University of Iowa. Reuse of this presentation is prohibited without the expressed written consent of the university and Learfield. Announcers are provided by Learfield and approved by the university. Iowa leading Maryland 5-0 as we get to the second inning. Boy, John, really need a one of those shutdown innings that we always talk about now. Right. You you put up a uh, you put up a seriously good crooked number, you know, a handful of runs. Now come back out, you know, clean this inning up, 12, 15 pitches, get back in the dugout, let those bats go back to work. Five, six, seven, due up for the Terps in the second. First pitch strike from Brody Breck to Kevin Keister. He's their starting second baseman. A one is low and outside, skipping in the dirt, backhanded by Moss. It's one and one. I know this will surprise you. Keister was first team all Big Ten last hmm. year. So that's what, the first four? I think so. Well, yeah, and the one, the the one guy transferred, and, so he and, didn't count. And the only reason that, that he wasn't was because he wasn't in the conference last year. One ball, two strikes. That's the count as Keister fouls this off. Brody's ready out of the wind up the pitch. Oof. Got oh, yeah, him. Go. Oh, it was a delayed call. 99 on the outside corner. Down he goes. And I guess, you know, as, as we continue to, <laughs> I thought that I thought he was going to call it a ball. It was it kind of, he tricked me with the, the slowness of it. But uh, the the other thing, you know, as you keep talking about all these, all these all Big Ten guys, you, you can't quit yet. You know, we, That's right. we, we've got 24 more outs that we need to get. First pitch to... Petritz is inside. 
Designated hitter, left-handed hitter. 1-0 pitch, outside corner, 1-1. One one. Brody looks good to, to start. Hawks have recorded four outs, all of them strikeouts. One ball, one strike, the pitch. Fouled back to the screen. It's one and two. Man, he really put that one in on the hands. A ball and two strikes now to the six hitter for Maryland. Yeah, busted right on the inner half there. Now, Petrich is, you know, wasn't all for, wasn't all Big Ten last year, but did make the all regional team, the College Park regional team. One, cool. two, swing and a miss. Fifth strike out of the game for Brecht. He's dealing in the second. You kind of waited for the uh, the Brody Brecht, you know, competitive fire of I want to challenge. If that pitcher thinks he's pretty good, I got to go. I, I've got to go just out duel him. Um, yeah, we're still early, but pretty good start. Fastball missing outside and the to start off the at bat for Eddie Hakopian. Seven hitter, first baseman. He stands in from the right side. 1 0 pitch from Brack. Hakopian squares to bunt, pulls it back, called strike one and one. Braver man than me to square run and bunt on any Oof. of these. You take a foul ball anywhere up and in to be a problem. 1-1, one, one, <laughs> slap to the right side, foul, and getting out of play. DeRiggy with great effort down there. Watch out, Brennan, about blew a tire and went into the <laughs> half wall there. One ball, two strikes. It's actually the, uh, might be the best contact we've seen on Brody so far today. One ball, two strikes. Brecht going for his sixth strikeout of the day. The pitch from Brody. He lifted over there to left, Dirty. a half swing for a base hit. Absolutely fooled him. Just had no chance, but a great piece of hitting there to just kind of drop the barrel of the bat, hit that slider down out of the zone. That thing was way low, and Hakopian just threw his hands at it, protected the zone with two strikes. We talk about it a lot, and just poked it in between Seegers and Tello on the left side. Maryland has their first hit of the game, second base runner. First pitch strike to Jacob Orr, their starting left fielder. Hawks lead 5-0, top of the second. Two down, runner on first for Maryland. Won't, won't blame Brody for not finishing off the inning that time. That was a pretty good pitch. 0-1, swung on and missed. Chased out of the zone, 0-2. Yeah, certainly nothing wrong with what he did there. Yeah, the four-pitch walk to Shaw, you let get away a little bit, but that one, <laughs> that one wasn't quite the same thing. The 0-2. Breaking ball called third strike. Got him on the inside corner. How about this start? Brody Breck through two. He's got six Ks. Hawks lead 5-0. Try to add to it in the bottom of the second. We're back after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At Opal, our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at oakmall.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! Knowing that I can make a difference in my patients' lives keeps me motivated every single day. Hi, I'm Dr. Kanya Ferguson at University of Iowa Healthcare. With academic medicine, we see the toughest cases, so we're always innovating. And we bring the best minds together to collaborate, so there's more brain power focused on you. Because that leads to exceptional care for our patients and our community. See how at UIHC.org. Bottom of the second inning, Iowa racing out to a 5-0 lead over Maryland. Now put Savakul back on the mound. No, I think this might be a different pitcher. No, it's him. Oh, he took his sleeves off. Yeah, that was clearly the problem. Yeah, he took his he had long <laughs> sleeves on. He took those off to pitch the second inning. Just looked a little bit different from, from up here. So maybe they've got him on uh, on Big Ten Network of ripping the sleeves off of that of anger. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Camera access. Well, it is starting to warm up in Iowa City. The sun's starting to shine. Hawks up 5-0. Bottom two. Here's Hawksdorf to lead it off. First pitch to him is low and outside. 
ball one. DeRiggy will follow, and then it'll be Anthony in the inning. If any Hawkeye hitters get on, we could see Raider Tello in the inning. And Savicol looked a little uncomfortable in that first inning. 1-0 pitch just fouled off to the right side. 1-1, one one. Huck just missed that one, didn't he? Kind of got under it just a touch. That was that, uh, that, was that get me over breaking ball again. That he just kind of loops in there right in the center of the zone. The Hawks can somehow see identify that early enough to get good swings on it. 1-1 one, one pitch to Huckstorf. Grounded foul. Sharply hit down the right field line. Huck's down in the count one and two. Reached on an error in the first, and he did score on the grand slam. <laughs> okay. Ground staff showing some great hustle there, trying to call the right fielder off. but Relentless. <laughs> really, well, he wants to do his job. John does a great job down there. 1-2 to Huckstorf. That's outside. Ball two. A-plus hustle and effort out of John right there. <laughs> Always. That's just Brings a, it all the time. That's just a given. Two balls, two strikes. Pitch on its way to Hochstorf. Fouled back to the screen. Good at bat here from Kyle. And this is what, uh, again, this is what we talked about. Carry this over, you know, good four, five. You know, we'll, that's the fifth pitch of the at bat. Keep, keep bearing it in. 2-2. Two, two, that one's going to be a called third strike. Outside corner. Good pitch from Savakul in his second strike out of the game. Huxdorf is the victim. Really good breaking ball there. Just, uh, buckled Huck's knees. Wasn't quite looking for that one. And, and uh, once you're fooled, I mean, unless uh, we needed that little bat flip that the, uh, <laughs> happened in the top of the inning. First pitch strike to Brennan DeRiggy on the outside corner. DeRiggy walked his first time up. I've seen a lot more curveballs this time through, and he's located them a lot better. Just off the plate away from the Hawkeye first baseman, left-handed hitter. The count's one and one. Got to argue that that's the almost the only pitch that he's thrown for a strike has been the breaking ball. Well, a good fast or, yes, breaking ball there. But, yeah, that's if you want to control the at-bat, you know, throw the get-me-over breaking ball first. Hawkeye hitters might not take it until they see it a couple times. And, you know, so you take it for a strike. Now you're ahead. Now you can command a little bit more. One-two, waved at and missed by DeRiggy. He's out number two. Savakul starting to... Settle in a bit in the bottom of the second. Well, like I said, you kind of knew, you know, he, he, he's, he's all a American. Great pitcher, he's yeah. all American for a reason. It's great the Hawkeyes got to him, but if you think you're going to put up five every inning, you know, you, you've got to keep that that approach and discipline. And sometimes he's still going to win, um, but you just keep keep working him. And ooh, up and in to Keaton Anthony to start his at bat after Anthony hit a grand slam off of him earlier. You know, just try to get him out of the game as quick as you can. Right. 1-0 pitch to Keaton. Grounded foul past Coach Heller down the third base line. I think this is a good message also for, uh, you know, the Iowa side of things to, to get back on, on track as a pitcher that, uh, okay, we can have our best pitchers out there, but it, even the best pitchers that give free bases can get hurt by him, right? Oh, exactly. And so you're going back to Keaton now in the Grand Slam. So what is that? Is that four different guys this year? 1-1, one, one, lifted to center, carrying well towards the track. Center fielder puts his hand on the wall, makes the catch right there in deep center. John will get to that thought in just a minute when we come back. Hawks are up 5-0. Top of the third we go at Dwayne Banks. We're back after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. After a cancer diagnosis, it's natural to want to start treatment right away. But first, get a second opinion from a team that specializes in your cancer. I'm Dr. George Weiner, director of University of Iowa Holden Comprehensive Cancer Center. Before you start treatment, you deserve to be confident you have the right diagnosis and know every option available to you. So whether it's with us or somewhere else, get a second opinion. It can change your care and your life. You probably know that a natural gas leak smells like rotten eggs, but what does a gas leak look or sound like? If you hear a whooshing or hissing sound, see dirt, dust, or water spraying from an area, or you get dizzy or queasy, leave the area immediately, then call 1-800-595-5325 once you're safely away. See midamericanenergy.com for more safety tips. Paid for by the customers of MidAmerican Energy. Mm -hmm. 
Iowa on top of Maryland, 5 0 in the top of the third inning. And Brody Brecht coming out for another inning of work. The Hawks have recorded six outs, all of them strikeouts for Brody. That's pretty good. Yeah, you can't, uh, can't do much better than that. I don't know. Maybe you just don't allow a hit, I guess, but we've already crossed that threshold, haven't we? Yeah, and that was a dirty one, so that doesn't even count. Um, but, you know, I asked that question, and part of the reason I asked the question, not only is it interesting because I always had four different players do it, but I was reading in the Maryland game notes, they started the season hitting a grand slam in each of their first three games. Wow. Which was pretty amazing. Swing and a miss on the first pitch from Brack. This is Elijah Lambros, their starting center fielder. I think they're up to five or something on the season total. So, Well, it wouldn't necessarily surprise me. They lead the Big Ten in home runs with 47. A one from Brecht. That's a called strike high in the zone. <laughs> that a couple of them might have had everybody on base. <laughs> yeah. Getting a little bit better crowd here now as the sun comes out. Ooh, just misses. Just off the plate on the outside part. One ball, two strikes. Yeah, the, the crowd's starting to fill in a little bit here. Try to get some baseball in today. One, two, swing and a miss. Seven outs, seven strikeouts for Brody Brecht. Fun. Uh, you know, a lot of times with strikeout guys, strikeout guys, it, it's... Uh, uh, you know, your pitch count gets way out of whack. But so far, Brody's been actually pretty efficient in, in getting the strikeouts and getting it done. Now, we'll see what adjustments Maryland makes here as he goes through the order now a second time. Yeah, good point. We're back to the top with Luke Schliger. I, wouldn't, I won't even tell you what he did his first time up. <laughs> seven outs, seven strikeouts. Everybody that's gotten out has struck out. Here's a pop-up to shallow left center. Seegers turns, runs, and then camps under it in shallow left center. He's got it. Two down. Farewell contact for Maryland. There you go. That's still good, though. That's two pitches. That's even that's even better from Brody's perspective. Sure, yeah. Save I mean, the arm, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you'd love to... Uh, You'd love to have one of those junior high games where you struck out 21 of the 24 outs, but... Um. Two down in the inning, half swing, LaRusso went around, and it's 0-1. Hawks up 5 nothing, top of the third. Well, I, you know, that he had to be looking slider because all of a sudden he's thinking 100 mile an hour. Oh, outside corner at 100, 0-2. Yeah, the first one is 100, you're thinking slider, and all of a sudden it's letter high, you've got no chance. Out of the windup, the 0-2. Swing and a miss. Chase the high heater. Breck is on fire. He's got eight strikeouts. We'll head to the bottom of the third. Hawks up 5-0. Back after this, this is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At Oak Knoll, our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at oaknoll.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! Greatness doesn't happen overnight. It takes time, focus, and dedication. At Shelter Insurance, we understand that because we put in the hard work and dedication for decades. And that commitment has paid off with award-winning customer service for your auto, home, and life insurance. Visit shelterinsurance.com and find an agent to help you choose the coverage you need. Shelter Insurance. We're your shield. We are your shelter. Iowa leading Maryland 5-zip in the bottom of the third. They'll send... Savakul back to the mound for another inning of work. His pitch count's not too high, but he's given up a, quite a few runs to the Hawkeyes, so try to make this be the last inning that we see him, right? Yeah, I, I mean, unless you are unless you hit him around, I don't think it'll be his last one. He's just, he sets at 50 pitches now, but you know, you'd really like to kind of, you know, four innings maybe max. You know, obviously if the Hawks could, could string together a little uh, middle to bottom of the order rally here, uh, maybe send him for a really early shower would be awesome. But again, you just don't really want to see him go five and six, kind of salvage that bad start and, and keep the bullpen guys that are just kind of, now they're just out there lounging in the sun. Tello, Peterson, and Honar do up 
in the Hawkeye third. First pitch strike to Raider on the outside corner. Raider was first pitch swinging in his at bat uh, in the first, grounded out to third. You saw it again there, that first pitch curveball as he's really gone to that to just it's the one thing he can seems to be able to trust to get ahead and so he's been able to throw that get strike one and then try to work from there if he's in the game long enough for the Hawkeyes to pick up on that watch out one one to Tello shot to the right side base hit into right field that one was in on the hands and Raider just pushed it over there to right he's on to lead off the third that's a wood bat it probably snaps in half the yeah. <laughs> the, uh, the old the aluminum bats he's able to to continue the swing through, fist it out into right field and start the third off with an easy single to right. Iowa went down one, two, three in the second. But start the third with a single from Tello. Here's Peterson, third baseman LaRusso playing in front of the bag, protecting against a bunt. First pitch to Peterson is just high. There's that curveball again. I mean, that's the, it seems, you know, the second time through the order, that's how he's pretty much started every hitter. Boy, if he hangs that, it's right he, in the wheelhouse for Petey, isn't he did it? hang that one. 1-0 is just low. Two balls and a strike. Hitters count for Peterson. See if the Hawks get active on the base paths. Tello, not necessarily a, a stolen base threat, but maybe a hit and run candidate. You know, Peterson put one in the wrestling facility construction over there. Two O's on the outside corner, called strike two and one. Yeah, Peterson with a solo home run in the first. That could be an archive uh, someday when that. <laughs> Time capsule over yeah. there. They'll check on Tello at first. He dives back in there safely. You know, again, just keep. Even the out, even the outs in the bottom of the second, you know, just keep quality at bats. Ooh. Peterson drives this foul to the right side towards the indoor track, and it's two and two. Just missed that one a little bit, a little bit, a little bit behind a, a little bit slower fastball, just 89 mile an hour there, so um, not as not as best fastball, but almost got it past Petey. Tello at first, the two two to Peterson, fouled off the catcher. And caught him in the leg. He hops up, limping around a bit. Good quality. Ooh, that, that caught him in a place he didn't want to get caught. Good quality umpire taking a little walk Ooh. out there to make sure Savakul was doing okay and give uh, give Shigger a little bit, Schligger a little bit more time to I recover. I more time than what he just gave him right there. 2-2 two -two to Petey on the ground to the left side. Third baseman's got it. Flip to second for one, on to first, safe at first. Peterson legs it out. Good hustle there by Peterson. Yeah, good uh, good job to get down the line. He didn't hit it really hard, but still had to still had to do work to get down the line and make sure uh, make sure it was just one out. Iowa leading Maryland 5-0 in the bottom of the third. Here's Honar with Peterson at first, one out in the inning. Honar struck out in the first. Stands in from the left side. Catcher is set up on the outside corner. They'll check on Peterson at first. He's back in without much of a tag attempt. And he is a stolen base threat with uh, seven for seven on the season. Had a big lead there too, so could see him, could see him put some action here. First pitch to Honar. That's low for a ball blocked nicely by the catcher, Schligger. J just a thought. You know, he's been going with that first pitch curveball, so you wonder if that's getting on Coach Heller's mind a little bit. To first pitch opportunity to run. Didn't do it there, but just something to think about. Or you wonder if at least Coach Heller's thinking about that. Didn't do it there, and you made Savakul break that trend as well. Yeah, and then he goes back to it the second time, but he misses well high there. Um, but, yeah, that's, you that's, know. that's the pressure that you put on the pitcher and the, and the pitching staff to, to call pitches when you get runners on, right? Right, because now it's, okay, hey, they're a threat to run. We don't want them in scoring position. Now we've got to speed up our delivery. We've got to speed up the what pitch we're throwing. 2-0 to Honar. That's outside. Ball three. Savakul can't really believe it. Three balls and a strike. Because he's been a little bit of everywhere. I mean, I know he's angry, but... Um, that ball missed, and especially with the way his catcher's catching it, he's trying to backhand frame it. 3-0 hit on the ground to the right side, through for a base hit. 3-0 swinging for Honar, and he's on. Runners on first and second for Iowa with one out in the third. Little surprised by that, but 
Really good piece of hitting there. Got the fastball up in the zone that he wanted. Had a big hole to hit it into. Only problem was Petey was pretty much stationary there and, and then had to wait for the ball to roll in front of him so that then he took off and got to, uh, got to second but couldn't get any farther than that. Hawks threatening in the third, up 5 nothing. It's Cade Moss. He's the batter. First pitch up and in on the hands for a ball. Moss was hit by a pitch, got hit in that left knee back in the first to, to keep that inning going. Frazier's on deck, who already has a base hit. Two on for the Hawks in the third. Moss will lay off the breaking ball. It's a called strike, though, and it's one and one. You know, and Savakul was way ahead. He was ahead 1-2 when he hit Cade in the first at-bat. Just 1-1 one one here, but a you know, chance for Cade now to see something he likes and maybe drive one into that gap. Mm, takes it at the knees, 1-2. and two. Good two-seam fastball right there. You know, Cade, sinking action. Cade, you know, 271 on the season. Catcher setting up outside. The one-two, check swing, did not go. Good job by Moss to hold the hands there. Pitch was in the dirt, two and two. I like your confidence. You didn't even wait for the appeal. This did not go. I mean, you were right, but didn't necessarily mean the umpire was going to agree with you. Put my neck out there a little bit, huh? <laughs> Adds to the drama if I have to say that I'm wrong. There's some people out there that like when I'm wrong. Two-two, runner takes off for third. This pitch is high. Throw down to third, safe at third base. Oh, they rung up Moss. It was a bit of a delayed call there. I was wrong on that one. How about that? That's unfortunate. Cade is out on strikes. And you look at the, uh, I, I would guess I, I was a little surprised, but then you look at Trackman, and, and uh, I guess I'm more surprised that Cade didn't swing at it. <laughs> right. I, I don't know what the, what the sign was there. Runners on the corners for the Hawks with two outs in the third. Here's Braden Frazier. Home plate umpire Daniel Jimenez is just taking his time, giving those strike three calls, isn't he? Well, and I think the other side with uh, with with Cade a little bit is you know he hasn't really he hasn't really located that fastball for a strike, so you're probably looking for something else. Um, you hate doing it with two strikes, but but it's very possible to sneak a fastball past if you could actually throw it for a strike. One out of Frazier's fouled back out of the stadium. Yeah, that's a good point, John. And just and who knows what the sign was too? Obviously, you don't want to strike out, but. You know, you put the ball in play, you get a line drive right to the shortstop, you get doubled up, so, you know, you, you take well, it that way, too. Well, he had no, there was no way he had any version of a take sign there. Uh, but Sure. But it's just, uh, you know. It wasn't he, the worst case scenario. Was what no, he had, and, you know, looking at it, you know, in this case now as, as uh, Honar takes second, you, you basically, you've almost successfully sack bunted him if you want right. to look at it that way. But, you know, Savakul just, you know, just over 56% strikes right now, so. Um, 2-1 to Frazier, ground ball to the left side, foul. Just kind of threw his hands at that one and just got a little bit too far out in front of it. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, two on in scoring position. Pitch to Frazier, swing and a miss. Just off the plate on the outside corner. Braden missed it. Hawks leave two. We head to the fourth. Iowa leading five nothing. Back after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Woo! Got my nachos, got my big TV, and my favorite chair. It's game time. But you know, the only thing that would make it a little better is if I could listen to my local broadcasters while watching the game. Oh, hello. You must have wished for your game to be synced with TV and radio. I sure did. Do you have a DVR? You bet. Do you have a streaming device? Yeah. Blammo. Your game is now synced. It's that easy. Oh, boy. To see if you can get synced, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. SyncMyGame.com? SyncMyGame.com. At MidAmerican Energy, we want to help keep you safe around power lines and electrical equipment. Always assume a power line is energized, even if it's on the ground. To avoid the risk of an accidental shock or electrocution, avoid touching a power line with anything. And when you see high voltage warnings on transformers and substations, stay away. We care about you and your safety. Get more tips at midamericanenergy.com. Paid for by the customers of MidAmerican Energy.
Iowa leading Maryland 5-0. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is Iowa Hawkeye Baseball. Maryland will send 3-4-5 into the batter's box in the top of the fourth. They try to crack the code that Brody Brecht has right now. He's off to an outstanding start. He's given up one hit, one walk, but he struck out eight of the 11 batters that he has faced. Shaw, he's leading off. He's one of the batters that was able to get on against Brecht. First pitch, Ooh. line drive right back to Brecht's foot and hit over towards Tello at third. Brecht is down. Oh, no. One oh eight, right back up the middle. You could hear a pin drop at Dwayne Banks Field right now. Mm. Breck trying to walk it off. Athletic trainer Jake Feldman out there with him, as long along with pitching coach Sean McGrath and head coach Rick Heller. Brody's trying to walk it off behind the pitcher's mound. And Shaw, class act over there, too, is kind of, he, he wants to come off first base to come see, too. That ball caught the inside ankle on the right foot of Brody. And it ricocheted past third base. Tello had to chase it down as it rolled yeah. into short, short foul territory left behind third there. So Brody's going to throw a few warm-up pitches. My goodness. Looks to be okay, and we're ready to go. A good ovation, round of applause on the well-being of Brody Brecht, who is ready to pitch now. A whole heaping of, whew. <laughs> Sighs of relief. Hawkeye fans waited with bated breath at Dwayne Banks. Now we're ready for Matt Woods. Left-handed hitter, first pitch, swing and a miss. Good bounce back from Brecht. Normally I talk about Brody not being in great fielding position, but uh, I'm not sure how great a fielding position you'd have to be to catch 108. You could have been totally yeah. in position for it and, and struggled with that one, right? Yeah, a lot of being in a perfect spot and still not made a catch. Counts nothing in one, squaring to bunt, pulling it back. Ooh. That one missed just low. As Ish. Woods takes it. Yeah. <laughs> one ball, one strike. Nobody out in the top of the fourth. Iowa leading 5 nothing. Scored all five runs in the first. The 1-1. Fouled back to the net. 1-2. and two. Shaw does have 10 stolen bases, so you want to talk about a complete player. You know, 319, nine doubles, eight home runs. Uh, you know, your middle of your infield shortstop, and then 10 of 11 stealing bases, so. One, two is inside, almost hit the batter. Well, he knew if he was going to take one, he was going to try to take the slider. Yeah. You mean you wouldn't want to take triple digits, John? No. no. Me neither. Two balls, two strikes. Breck comes set out of the stretch. The pitch, swing and a miss. Got him. That's a Hawkeye striker. Good bounce back there from Brody. Just a relatively quick and efficient at bat after the uh, second baseman. A little scared. Hopefully small health scare. Sure, he's going to have a bruise. He played football. He's going to have plenty of bruises from that. Might have permanent bruises from that. Kevin Keister, right-handed hitter. First pitch from Brecht. Just outside. I was looking on one of Brody's strikeouts. Big Ten Plus, or Big Ten Network posted it as a 104-mile-an-hour fastball. Well, I appreciate the energy. It wasn't... <laughs> I haven't seen one of those pop up on TrackMan yet. 1-0 from Brecht is tapped foul to the left side. But, but now they've posted it, so it, it is actually legend. So if, if it's on, if it makes its way to social media, count it, right? One ball, one strike, one out. Because we know nothing's ever been posted on social <laughs> media that was inaccurate. <laughs> We'll take, we'll take the credit. That's all right. Two balls and a strike. Now Brecht missing a couple times in this at bat to Keister, whom he struck out in the second. Quick move over to first, but 
Shaw hadn't come off the bag too far yet. I like the idea from Brody. Shaw might be thinking about heading for second. The pitch from Breck, that's high. Ball three. Got a battle back here. Yeah, we've really seen, uh, seen the best control I've seen out of Brody in any start, particularly yep. against quality of competition. Um, Easter it, swings and misses at ball four right there, and the count is now full. Make him pay right here, huh? Well, you make it sound like that slider's easy to lay off of. <laughs> That's why we're up here, isn't it, John? <laughs> Three balls, two strikes. Brecht is ready. The pitch. Swing and a miss. Number 10. Made him pay. Career high tire with 10 right there. But, yeah, just a, a good bounce back there, you know. Other than the walk, I'm not sure he's had a three ball count, which again kind of is to the, the quality of opposition, um, you know, is a high level of command that Brody's had so far. Two down in the inning. Here's Pitchrot's first pitch ball, low and in. Brecht struck him out in the second. There's a runner at first for the Terps in the fourth. Iowa leading 5 0. Got a couple of hits off of Brody. That's about it. Literally one of them off Brody. Yeah. 1-0 pitch is up and in for a ball. 2-0. It'll be interesting to see if uh, if Jared heads down to the bullpen after this because his control, he has started to miss up a little bit. And so you just wonder if there's maybe a little bit more going on. 2-0. That's low. Ball three. And the interesting thing will also be sitting in the dugout for a little bit is that Ankle pro likely starts to swell. Let's let's be let's be realistic here. Yeah, you can run an adrenaline rush for a little bit and then see kind of what happens after that. But we'll need a bounce here. Three zero is off the plate outside. A four pitch walk to Petrutz to keep the inning going for the Terps. So a single to start it. Back to back strikeouts. Now a walk issued by Brecht. And here's Hakopian. And Hakopian had that first hit when Breck was well ahead in the count and just kind of served one up into left field after he was fooled. Just got to get one more out in the inning here, Brody. First pitch on its way home. Chopper up the middle. Honar's got a beat on it. He'll flip it to Seegers for the force out at second. One pitch to take care of the third out of the inning. Hawks are leading Maryland 5-0. Bottom of the fourth coming up. Iowa trying to get back in the run scoring column right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. When you're in the eastern Iowa area, be sure to visit and connect with the official local business partners of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The hotel at Kirkwood Center, Iowa's premier luxury hotel. The Jill Armstrong team with Skogman Realty, the area's premier realtor. And Options Exteriors, your preferred local roofing and exterior company. Handling all of your exterior needs from roofing, siding, windows, and gutters, they've got you covered. Providing free damage inspections and help filing insurance claims. Call 319-343-6376. Knowing that I can make a difference in my patients' lives keeps me motivated every single day. Hi, I'm Dr. Kanya Ferguson at University of Iowa Healthcare. With academic medicine, we see the toughest cases, so we're always innovating. And we bring the best minds together to collaborate, so there's more brain power focused on you. Because that leads to exceptional care for our patients and our community. See how at UIHC.org. It'll be the third time through the order for Iowa. Coming up in the bottom of the fourth, Seegers, Huxdorf, and Derigi. We hung five on the Terps in the first. Have gone down relatively quiet the innings since then. Time to put another blow on them, huh? Had a couple, had a couple base runners last inning, and and uh, couldn't quite, couldn't quite seal the deal. But yeah, four four runners left on base for each team so far, and. We'll see if the top of the order can get started against Savakul at 72 pitches. Again, you'd really like to make this his last inning. Just you know, don't let him get five. Right. There's just something about that uh, as the starter on Friday. That ooh, first pitch to Seegers up and in on the hands. Kind of caught a I thought break. Thought I heard something. I say caught a break that it didn't catch the uh, didn't catch the bat, and I think we're gonna have a little chat here. Time called, and the umpires are actually gonna come together. 
as Rob Vaugh. Seegers and the catcher having a little chat. Watched the uh, LSU-Tennessee game last night, and there was a, uh, a call where they gave the, gave the runner or gave the hitter first base on getting hit by the pitch, and he jogged down there, and you know, he made no reaction as the ball basically looked like it hit him in the hand. I was like, that's pretty impressive to take a 97-mile-an-hour fastball off your hand and not flinch at all, and then they showed the replay, and he caught it off the handle of the bat. Ah. It's like, well, that would, uh, that would do it. So they are going to say that it was a foul tip by Seegers. And so the count is 0 and 1. And now Coach Heller will come down from his post <laughs> at the third base coach's box and get an explanation. They convinced Coach Sutherland, who didn't, uh, didn't agree with it. Now, I'm not sure what. Uh, it's going to be a hard one to argue. You, yeah. Yeah, we think we saw it. Well, okay. We don't have a replay here, so we don't. But we got to admit, we heard a little. You got to admit it. I'm, I'm still stuffed up from midweek. I you can't got hear one of your ears plugged, huh? All right. Nothing in one pitch to Seegers. There's a way to get around this, right? Would be just find a way to get on either well, way, yeah. right? It's just one pitch. No big deal either way. But it does kind of control. You know, we've talked about Savakul's had a hard time getting ahead of hitters other than that curveball. 1-1. One, one, Seegers drives to right. Right fielder sprinting towards the line. He will slide oh. and make the catch. Got it close to the line. Seegers is out number one. Boy, that ball hung up in the air forever. I thought, first I thought it was an easy catch, and then it just kind of kept drifting, and I suppose there's just enough wind there pushing it back toward the right fielder to, to let him make a sliding play there. And uh, good job from Woods to, to get down there and make the catch. Boy, imagine if that would have got down and got to the wall. That's probably inside the park home run territory, don't you think, for Seegers? Seegers is at least standing on third base, yeah. and Coach Heller's putting up a sign for him. Ooh. Huxdorf has worked a one and one count after a breaking ball is called a strike on the outside corner. Hawks up five nothing, bottom four. One one to Hawks, swing and a miss. One and two. Seegers has been a little hard luck too. He made the the last out of the first inning on just a rocket to the second baseman and then uh, hits that one. Huxdorf taps this foul to the left side. You it's, can really hear Savakul's effort. Uh, on his pitches. You can hear him grunt as he releases the ball towards home. Ready with the one two. Here it comes. That's out off the plate. Two and two. You know, he's he'll be up over eighty now, so you know you're you're kind of getting into that range. Huck drives the two two on the ground. Shortstop Shaw will scoop it up, throw it across, two down in the inning. Just hasn't quite, uh, you know, top of the order struggled a little bit midweek. And, yeah. uh, you know, at least you saw kind of a, a table setting and good at bats, I guess, is, is, is kind of the best part. Still Hawks with um, just five hits, they've, which I think is what they had Tuesday as that curve balls right. across for a strike. But and, and the thing, there's some feeling here that this is kind of how the Illinois State game started. 0 1 pitch to Dorigi, that's low and outside, where Iowa got a few runs early and then nothing in the middle innings. And then that's when you kind of got that uneasy feeling like, hey, we aren't done here yet. 1-1 one, one to Dorigi, line drive, base hit to right field. I'll get down in front of the right fielder. And that's what you've seen from, uh, you know, the Hawks have done a better job this year, and it's, it's how you start averaging nine runs a game is, you know, scoring and then continuing to score. You know, it, it, you know we scored two here and three here and, and one here instead of, oh, we scored two and then we scored three later and then we didn't score anything in between and didn't even really rally. Right. And that's what, you know, and that's what you hope as you go one through nine uh, of, of really solid hitting that, that you don't have some of those, those holes and gaps and just one of those nights on, on midweek mm -hmm. and now you want to get rid of it. Anthony's the batter. Count is 1-0 and to him. They check on Dorigi over there at first. Anthony with a grand slam today and then went deep to center but was caught at the wall back in the second. 1-0 pitch to Anthony. That's low and outside. Faked a throw behind move over to first. Dorigi had to scramble back. Two balls, no strikes. 
Dorigi would have the dirtiest uniform with him. You, and, he, and, and it would be sneaky because you don't really expect him to have to slide a lot or dive back a lot. But, man, does he. 2-0. Anthony lays off. Called strike. Way outside, but it's 2-1. Yeah, he's going to. He's going to ask, please tell me that's the outer edge of the strike yeah. zone. <laughs> Boy, anything, can't go any further yeah, than that. Anything farther, I can't reach. Pitch on its way home. Anthony swings at this one, drives it deep to center. Wind will not be able to carry this one out. Keaton's been on it. That one's caught by the center fielder, Lambros. Anthony driving the ball all over the yard today. Couldn't quite... Hammer that one out of here. Iowa leading through four, five nothing. We're back after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Woo! Got my nachos, got my big TV, and my favorite chair. It's game time. But you know, the only thing that would make it a little better is if I could listen to my local broadcasters while watching the game. Ah, uh, hello. You must have wished for your game to be synced with TV and radio. I sure did. Do you have a DVR? You bet. Do you have a streaming device? <laughs> yeah. Blammo. Your game is now synced. It's that easy. Oh, boy. To see if you can get synced, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. SyncMyGame.com? SyncMyGame.com. Hey everyone, I'm Mark Wahlberg, and I have some exciting news to share. At Wahlburgers, we are all about bringing the family together to enjoy a great meal and have a great time. That's why right now, for a limited time, kids eat free every day at all Hy-Vee Wahlburger locations. Kids 12 and under can enjoy one free kid's meal with any purchase of an adult burger, sandwich, or entree salad. Bring the family to Wahlburgers and the Wahlburgers and Hy-Vee stores, where right now, kids can eat free. Top of the fifth inning, Iowa leads Maryland 5-0 from Dwayne Banks in Iowa City. John Evans and John Leo in the broadcast booth. Thanks for joining us today. Happy Friday, Hawkeye Nation. We're pretty happy in the broadcast booth at this point. Iowa hung five on the Terps in the first. Nothing since then. Maryland hasn't had anything the entire day. Brody Brecht is back on the mound. Looks like he's okay. First pitch is hit on the ground, past a diving Tello at third. Seegers will grab it, throw it to first, but it's well late. It'll be an infield single for Jacob Orr to start the fifth. Just the third hit of the game for Maryland. Two infield singles and an oh, by the way, uh, flip your bat at it single. So, again, team's having a hard time getting solid contact on Brody, but now, you know, leadoff hitter, got a pitch around it. This, we've talked about it. This game's... Game's not over here. Don't let him. Don't let him think they have a chance as he misses wide with a slider there. Bottom of the order with Lambros. Got to be honest, the Terps have hit quite a few ground balls when they've made contact. Haven't elevated anything. Can use a ground ball here. 1 0 pitch, squaring to bunt, not pulling it back. He committed to it, missed it, 1 and 1. You know, Brody, 62% strikes so far. So. Really good job commanding the zone. Just needs to stay after it here. See if he can get one of those uh, Lambros to hit a little ground ball to Seegers. Outside corner, called strike, one and two. Brecht with 10 strikeouts today, matching his career high. Looks in for the sign from Moss, the one, two. Called third strike, inside corner, a new career high for Brody Brecht. He's got 11 today. Let's hope to get to say that uh, another time or two or three here before this is all over. Because yeah. we get back to the top of the order. This is a big series of big series of hitters for yeah. how this is going to go. We're, we're just talking about weather. You know, you get a couple outs. You've got the potential for it to be a complete game. But the wind's going to start kicking up Ooh, here, too. Hit him. First pitch barely clipped his elbow guard. And so Schliger is on. Almost looked like he leaned Man. into that one, but boy, what a uh, what a tight. Uh, uh, and again, that's what happens when you crowd. That's what Coach McGrath's talking about, that he leaned into it. He kind of stuck that elbow down there. Uh, but you're just not going to. You're just not going to get that call. Runners on first and second for the Terps in the fifth. 
Here's LaRusso, base hit into center. The Terps are going to try to send the runner from third. The throw will come in, be cut off. Maryland is on the board with an RBI single from Nick LaRusso. And that's the, uh, I guess that's the single. That's not the free base hurting you yet, but uh, free base hurting you a little bit in that you moved him up automatically. But chance here now to, you know, you just got to buckle up. Shaw obviously hit the, Hit the rope right back at you his last time at bat. Yeah. So. Haven't been able to get him out today. Iowa leading 5-1 now in the top of the fifth. Runners on first and second with one out. First pitch from Brack. That's right down the middle called strike. And the Terrapins had started to sit on that slider a little bit, and they'd kind of been ready, ready for it, taking the swings at that, figuring that was their best chance at contact there. So good job by Brody there to come back with a 99 fastball. And the 0-1 is hit out of play. 0-2, good job from Brecht. You know, key here again, just stay focused in, finish the at-bat. Takes his time on the mound, the 0-2. That's high at the eyes for a ball. You know, raise that eye level up with the fastball. Missed higher than he wanted, but raise that eye level up. Now give him the slider away into the left-handed batter's box. See if you're right, John. Here's the pitch. Ooh, up and in. I think the hitter, Shaw, was thinking about it because he was leaning forward towards the plate, and that one was up and in. He had to jump back. Gave him the slider. You know, Moss was set up outside. I think Brody just missed his spot there. Two balls, two strikes. The pitch. That's high again. Ball three. Now we're getting some activity in the Iowa bullpen. It's been a ghost town to this point. Got to get some activity with a full count to Shaw, the three hitter. A couple runners on for Maryland with one out in the fifth. Iowa leading 5-1. Time called. Yeah, you've got a power hitting team and the tying runs on deck and storm blowing in so the wind's starting to pick up. Oh man, is it? Got to buckle up here and you know, try to Try to just minimize the damage. Make sure you're throwing strikes. Three balls, two strikes. Pitch from Brett. Lined back to the screen. Good battle between these two right now. Good job from Shaw there. 98 mile an hour fastball high and away. Stuck with it and fouled it back to the screen. Feels like a big pitch in the game right here. I'd agree with that. 3-2. Line drive right center, and it'll get down. Weakly hit off the end of the bat. Here comes another run for Maryland. 5-2. RBI single for Shaw. They're hanging around. That's big league hitting right there. I mean, that's a, that's a slider off the plate. Uh, Shaw went and got it, hit it off the end of the bat. 69-mile-an-hour 69 exit velocity and just kind of poked it out into right field and dropped out there and I guess fortunately for the Hawkeyes runners didn't move up but you know in a game that the Iowa's felt in complete control in all of a sudden you've got the tying run at the plate. Yeah three hits in the inning for the Terps up to five for the game Iowa leading 5-2. We've got a mound visit from pitching coach Sean McGrath Jacob Henderson getting loose for the Hawkeyes in the bullpen don't see Jared Simpson down there my guess is you'd get the uh, you'd get Jacob for you'd get Jacob for the dirty inning, and then you'd probably turn to Jared in the next inning. All right, well it's five to two. Still runners on first and second. Here's Woods. First pitch from Brecht is high and outside. The Maryland dugout's got some life now. Yeah, I'm not sure why he wouldn't be interested now. Yeah, <laughs> tying run at the plate for Maryland. One zero pitch. Swing and fouled back. Be one and one. I mean, the worst part of the rally from the Hawkeye perspective is, you know, there really hasn't been a ball that hard hit. You had the hardest ball hit was the last inning when Iowa got out of the mess. One one just off the plate outside. And so they haven't really, they haven't really done a ton of damage, um, power wise, but they've they've positioned it well. 2-1 from Brecht, swing and a miss, 2-2. Two and two. Good challenge pitch up and in right there. 
Boy, could really use another one of those strikeouts here, Brody. Yeah, Woods is a guy that struck out 21 times on the year coming into today. So the 2-2, two -two, swing and a miss. He was way behind that one. Second out of the inning. Not out of the woods yet, but Woods goes down for the third time today via strikeout. Oh, I see what you did yeah. there. I see what you did there. Keister's another guy that struck out 21 times coming into today. So see if Brody can just finish it up himself here and hand it over to his bullpen. Here's Keister, first pitch blocked away by Moss, backhanded outside for a ball. Runners on first and second for the visitors. In the top of the fifth, two down. Hawks up 5-2, trying to put out the little fire that started in the fifth. 1-0 pitch off the plate outside, ball two. And actually, we're just at pitch 81 for Brody. So if he could get out of this, you know, not, a, not impossible to imagine him coming back out for next inning. The 2-0, breaking ball, call and strike. Outside corner, 2-1. and one. Good slider Could, there. Couldn't miss right there. You don't want to go down 3-0. and oh. Absolutely. Had to bounce back. Did a good job there. Kept it... Uh, Kept himself with a chance here to end this at bad. Ah, that one's too far outside, though. Brody missed three and one. It's funny how easy it was for four innings, and even in this inning, it wasn't that bad. Um, but you can just see it's a little bit more of a labor, and balls are starting to miss. His missed dispersions much wider. Yeah, and that one was in the dirt ball four bases loaded for Maryland in the fifth as the rain starts to fall at Dwayne Banks in Iowa City Be a really interesting spot I don't know if uh, I don't know how I feel about uh, do you, you let the guy work out of it or do you uh, do you go with the hook and and bring in Hendo to clean it up for him high pressure situation Breck to go to the wind up First pitch is high for ball one to Petrutz. He struck out and walked. Hawks up 5-2 in the fifth, but the base is loaded for Maryland. Two down, and Breck balked. A balk is called. Coach Heller is out of the dugout saying that Brecht is looking at his wristband for the pitch call, and the third base... Umpire doesn't want to have any time for it. And a run is in for Maryland. It's 5-3. to three. Huh. Wow. I don't think any type of answer would have been satisfactory in that situation, right? No. But you don't have a choice. And, I mean, I guess to the... the to Mark Hutchinson's credit, he, he was willing to explain, and he just wanted Coach Heller to stay off the field, whatever the whatever the protocol was there. Made Coach stop at the good swing and a miss there on a fastball. Made him stop at the stop at the foul line, but he, he came over and addressed him. And, well, to, to your point, I don't think yeah. there was going to be any explanation that Coach Heller was going to enjoy. And now that's kind of rattled the beehive for Brecht, the 1-1 on its way home. That's low, ball two. Runners at second and third now for Maryland with two outs in the fifth, and it's a 5-3 game. Just like that feels like we're we're basically tied, almost feels like. Well, you're one of those cheap singles away from a tie game here all of a sudden. 2-1, swing and a miss, just overpowering this hitter. I'm a big fan of that. Yeah. He's been and late on everything. Keep going with it. Now you got to finish it off. This is, all right, it's 2-2. Two -two. Don't fool around. Don't get to 3-2. and two. Just get him right now. The 2-2. Two -two. That's low, ball three. Boy, he didn't miss by much there. It was a little bit, I think he missed his spot. It made it hard for Cade to catch it and frame it. Ball kind of snuck away from Cade, and he wasn't able to, to give the umpire a good view of it. Got to have it right here. The 3-2 from Brecht. Lifted foul out of play to the right side. We'll do it again. Yeah, we'll see. Petrutz is a guy that you can usually get with a slider, but Brody's been able to work the fastball right past him. 3-2. This one is drilled down the line and right, thankfully getting foul. That was the slider, but, I mean, <laughs> perfect place to, you know, that's, that's what you do with it. You know, it's, it's, if you hit it, that's what's going to happen, Yeah, right? it's on the inside, on the knees. Um, I mean, the exit velo is 105, but it's 
Um, it's not even in the in the range of the ballpark. 3-2, tapped foul again, this time to the right side. Quite a battle between Petrutz and Brecht. Who's going to win it? Went right back to the same pitch there. Pretty good location again. Petrutz is sitting on the fastball and just trying to fight off the slider, doing a great job so far. The 3-2. Bloop down the right field line towards foul territory, and this will get out of play into the bullpen. That time gave him the fastball and busted him inside with it. Really working that inner part of the plate. Here we go, Brody, right here. Three balls, two strikes. Time called as Honar wasn't back to his position quite yet at second base. So Brody was ready, and uh, his defense was still positioning. Here's the 3-2 from Brecht. Swing and a miss. Got him. What a comeback there from Brody Brecht. 13 strikeouts for Brecht, but the Terps get three in the inning. Iowa leading 5-3. We're back to the bottom of the fifth right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At U.S. Cellular, we think phones are great, but they're not always great for us because while they connect us to so much, they can also distract us from, well, us. The us that actually laughs out loud with each other instead of just texting it. That knows being in the same room doesn't always mean being together. So let's find us again by putting our phones down. Not forever, just for five. Five days, five hours, even five minutes. Join U.S. Cellular and the Phones Down for Five Challenge. Find out more at uscellular.com slash find us. When you're in the Eastern Iowa area, be sure to visit and connect with the official local business partners of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The Hotel at Kirkwood Center, Iowa's premier luxury hotel. The Jill Armstrong team with Skoglin Realty, the area's premier realtor, and Options Exteriors, your preferred local roofing and exterior company. The Hotel Kirkwood, named the Corridor Business Journal's 2022 Best Banquet and Event Venue, and awarded the AAA Four Diamond Award for Lodging. To make reservations, visit the Hotel at Kirkwood.com or call 877-751-5111 for more information. Well, after that first inning, we wouldn't imagine that Savakul would still be in the game, but that is, in fact, the case. In the bottom of the fifth, he returns for another inning of work. Iowa leading Maryland 5-3 after the Terps got a couple of a few runs in the top half of the inning. Hawks will try to answer with Tello, Peterson, and Honar. Quiet since the first when Iowa put up five on Maryland. Iowa with five runs, six hits, no errors. Maryland, three runs, five hits, one error. Tello drives the first pitch to deep left center. Carrying well. Get going, baby. Adios, Pelota. Raider, Tello. Boom. Crushed it to left center. Carried well in some light tower power for Tello. Hit it off the light pole. Hawks up 6-3. How about that for an answer? Tello's second home run of the season. He got all of that one. Iowa leading 6-3. Just when Maryland probably felt that they were getting some momentum back. Tello quiets that down. Doubling up Maryland in the bottom of the fifth. Here's Peterson. First pitch was a ball. Second one on its way. Sam takes this one for a strike, up and in. And it's one and one. Step away for one second, and Raider does that. L literally one, John. One, one to Petey. He hits this in the air. Deep to right center. Right fielder, center fielder come together. It'll be the right fielder, Woods, who makes the catch in the alley. One down in the fifth. And I missed it. Did you honor him with the You bet call? I did, yes. All right, good, good. You missed it. I did. It's all right. Let's do it again, huh? Oh, yeah, that'd be all right. Here's Honar with one down in the bottom of the fifth. Iowa up 6-3. First pitch to Sam is a called strike on the outside corner. And the weather's not, I mean, it's... What are you feeling out there? Barely a sprinkle. Easy for me to say under sure. cover here, but yeah, I'm walking out there. It's still pretty comfortable. It's just thick. Yeah. 1-1, hit down the line and left. Out of play, 1-2. and two. 
Just keeping our eyes on the sky today. There's just some showers moving in for now, but later is just not supposed to be good. So if you're listening in the eastern Iowa area, paying attention, have your plan in place. One ball, two strikes to Honar, and the pitch. That skips on its way home, two and two. I wonder if Savicool has given up three home runs in a game before. I'd find it hard to believe if that were true. I think Iowa's really got him figured out. 2-2 two -two to Sam. Line drive, foul ball left side. Yeah, he is fourth in season strikeouts his season last year. Fourth in innings pitched last year, all time. Had a pretty strong year. Iowa's done a really, really nice job getting after him. Battling, making him earn everything. He's got five strikeouts today. The 3-2, Honar chops on the ground to second. Scooped and thrown in time, two down. A good at-bat from Sam. Just didn't, uh, didn't get all the payoff he obviously wanted, yeah. but put a good battle. So now we'll see what... Cade can keep the inning going. What do you think for the next inning, John? You think you think Brody starts it? You think the Hawks go to the bullpen? Moss takes a first pitch ball. I think you got Jerry Simpson down there warming up, and I think he's. I think they'll go. I think they'll go right to him. All right. One will pitch to Moss. Half swing, got a piece of it, and tapped it foul to the left side. One and one. I think you want to get, give him a clean inning. Just let him get started, and I mean, a reasonable chance he could finish up the game for you, too. Moss is all eyes. Good discipline out of the Hawkeye catcher. That one didn't have a chance. Started outside, stayed outside. Two balls and a strike. Got some action going on. Yeah. Two ones hit on the ground towards short. It's gloved Ooh. by Shaw. Poor throw over to first. Ended up being okay for the third out of the inning. It hopped on its way there, but first baseman Hakopian had enough time to field it on that hop. Iowa gets one in the fifth. A Raider Tello home run. Hawks lead 6-3 as we get to the sixth. We're back after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At Oak Mall, our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at oakmall.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! Woo! Got my nachos, got my big TV, and my favorite chair. It's game time. But you know, the only thing that would make it a little better is if I could listen to my local broadcasters while watching the game. Uh, hello. You must have wished for your game to be synced with TV and radio. I sure did. Do you have a DVR? You bet. Do you have a streaming device? <laughs> yeah. Blammo. Your game is now synced. It's that easy. Oh, boy. To see if you can get synced, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. SyncMyGame.com? SyncMyGame.com. Iowa leading Maryland 6-3, top of the sixth inning at Dwayne Banks in Iowa City. A great day for Brody Brecht on the mound. Iowa will go to the bullpen now with Jared Simpson. Jared makes his eighth appearance on the season. He's 3-0, 524 ERA, 22 and a third innings, 17 hits, 13 runs. They've all been earned. 12 walks, 37 strikeouts. Opponents hitting just 207. Biggest kind of knock on Jared so far this year has hit eight batters. Mm. Um, kind of throws that sweeping left-handed pitch. He's had a hard time as he tries to bring it inside occasionally to the right-handers. He's just missed in. They've been willing to take it. But, yeah, Brody Breck, five innings, five hits, three runs. They were all earned, three walks, a career-high 13 strikeouts. Um, I don't even know if I want to call that a hit a batter, though. Grazed, yeah. a, grazed an elbow pad on a batter, I mean, maybe. For the stats, he hit somebody, but it barely <laughs> touched him. Unfortunately, it did cost it counts, him a run. Right? Yeah. And we'll see Simpson. I, I think it's perfect time for Simpson to come into the game. Total change of pace from what you see from Brody, right? And that's part of what, what they like about it. And part of why 
um, in between that inning, you saw, you know, if if there was a fire to get put out, it was going to be Jacob Henderson because it's such a different movement than what Brody brings in. You know, the, the, the change is so dramatic. And then now as you go to the new clean inning, you're going to get that same thing. You know, instead of the 100-mile-an-hour the uh, hundred mile an hour right-hander with the 92 mile an hour slider. You're going with the, the, the 90, 93, 94, 95 mile an hour left-hander out of kind of a three-quarter slot, um, really bringing it across. So good change of pace. Feels important to get off to a good start against Eddie Hakopian, right-handed hitter. Simpson out of the stretch, first pitch, strike, one, yes. How about a floating at 80 mile an hour curveball up there? Talked about Savakul with the get me over curveball. That one was just a beauty. Could not have been looking for that one. Hakopian with a single in the second, and another one here in the sixth. Right up the middle. Might be the, I guess the, I call it the quality of of Maryland at bats. It's just. You know they haven't hit, they haven't hit a bunch of rocket ships, but man, they've hit a bunch of ground balls. Well, a couple right back up the box, and then you know a couple into into the short third hole and and first second hole. So just really done a nice job of positioning as much as anything. Jacob Orr is the batter with a runner on first in the sixth. First pitch is high, ball one from Simpson. The middle infield, or rather the entire infield for Iowa, really playing Orr to pull here. Honar close to the bag at second. Seegers maybe a little bit more towards third than usual. Or at 219 limited at bats. Wouldn't be surprised to see him square around here. Yeah, good point. Simpson's 1-0 delivery is low and out. Ball two. Ish. Yeah, that's look look good from up here. But, you know, you really kind of want to get through the rest of this pretty clean because you don't want to turn back over to the top again with a bunch of traffic on the base paths. Two O's, an inside corner strike call, two and one. Good job by Simpson there. Took a little something off the fastball, but brought it right inside, painted the, painted the inside corner and got the strike. Moss flashing the signs. Simpson's 2-1. Ground ball right back to him, hits him in the back. Simpson's got it. He'll flip it to first. Got him by about a step and a half. Man, these Maryland hitters hitting it right back where it came from, aren't they? And, and I, I would actually say Jared did that on purpose. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, you know, it, it wasn't, I mean, it was hit hard enough, but it looked like he saw it and realized the only way he was going to be able to get anything on it was to basically just stand in front of it. Mm -hmm. So he went ahead and took it, um, found the ball then, corralled it, and flipped it over to first and got the out. Good job. Batter is now Elijah Lambros. He's their nine hitter. Struck out twice today. First pitch from Simpson dropped low for a ball. Wind actually starting to pick up now. Blowing even harder out to left center and getting a little chilly too, isn't it? So I can hear it through our headset, so I don't know whether that's you or me or our, our live mic to try to catch some sound. But, yeah, certainly starting to blow a little bit more. Left-handed delivery is a called strike from Simpson. One and one. Iowa leading Maryland 6-3 in the series opener, our first Big Ten action of the year. Out through 23 games, Hawks are 19-4, Maryland 15-9. Maryland played UCF Central Florida last week. Mm, and hit him. Simpson hits the batter. And you touched on it, John. The hit batters have been a problem for Jared this year. Yeah, when he tries to come inside, he's just, for whatever reason, his, his miss point inside is just... Uh, too far, isn't uh, it's it? It's <laughs> too far inside. And, and so, uh, you know, and part of that is you know, how much movement he gets on pitches. But, you know, really big spot now here as we roll back to the top of the order. Schliger is up. He was hit by a pitch in the fifth. Runners on first and second and one out. Pitch from Simpson. Outside corner. Called strike. Good start, Jared. Yeah, this is the opener, Big Ten opener for Maryland as well. Some Big Ten teams started last weekend, but um, kickoff here for both of these teams. Counts nothing and one. Pitch from Simpson. That's too far outside. One and one. A couple of really good series in the Big Ten this weekend. Michigan's playing Illinois, I believe. 
Indiana currently on a great streak. They've won eight in a row. 1-1 one, one from Simpson, outside corner again, one and two. You got Northwestern two to one over Purdue, bottom of the sixth inning. At Rutgers and Michigan State, Ohio State, Minnesota, Indiana, Penn State, and Michigan, Illinois tonight. One ball, and two strikes. Simpson looks in for the sign, feels it and deals it. Low and outside, ball two. Good pitch there. And one of the things that we really talked about with Brody was, you know, you had to get strike one. You had to work from ahead. And Jared struggled a little bit with that. You know, been ahead now here on Schliger, but he's now he's now he's got to finish it. We talked yeah. about that with both Brody and Savakul. Longer at bats from Maryland this inning. The 2-2 hit foul down the left field line. We'll do it again at 2-2. Two and two. Well, they've really kind of had a mix. You know, the... Uh, the Hacopian single up the middle was on an 0-1 count. Uh, the, the ground ball off Simpson was a 2-1. Mm -hmm. um, and then Lambros got hit with a 1-1. So The 2-2, that's high. Ball three. But to your point now, we're full, and, and we fouled off a couple pitches here. So really good at bat here from the top of the order. Yeah, I guess this one just feels extra long. Yeah, and, and that's what makes the bottom of the order so important. You know, you've got to finish those guys off. And instead, you, you get to the better hitters, you know, all conference this, ball for that, and now you're loaded with one out. 3-2 was just high. A couple of free bases in the inning. Third baseman, Nick Caruso. Maryland drawing their third, fourth walk of the day. Been hit by a couple of pitches as well and now the Hawks in a bit of trouble up 6-3 but bases loaded for Nick LaRusso who has a single on the day fouls back the first pitch and it's 0-1 John just couldn't couldn't quite make the play off the screen <laughs> yeah I just need to shake it off here he's got he's got the stuff he's got to trust it and go get him Moss sets up outside, the 0-1, swing and a miss, 0-2. Come on, Jared. Jared's hat goes blowing off. Wind continues to just whip. Infield playing back, not not playing in. You want to get getting out somewhere, right? Right, yeah. He, Just don't worry about the guy at home. You're up by three. Yeah, with the lead here, if you can turn two, great. If you can, but, you know, make sure you get an out. Don't let, don't let a single turn into two runs and nobody out. The 0-2. Just inside. Good pitch from Simpson, but off the plate. It's one and two now to the Terrapin third baseman. Yeah, we talked about that. That's another one of those close pitches to scare the elbow pad again. The one two popped up, foul out of the stadium, straight back. Because if I'm a Maryland hitter, um, well, if I'm any hitter on, on Jared Simpson and I'm a little braver than I currently am in my life stage, <laughs> if I have two strikes, I'm probably crowding the plate. Yeah. I'm trying to take away that inside part. I'm making him go away from me because if he comes in, I'm going to take a chance he's going to hit me. One, two, swing and a miss. Got him. High heater. Really, really good bounce back there from, from Simpson. And, Nothing mm. easy now with Matt Shaw stepping yeah, to the plate. He's been a thorn in the Hawkeye's side today. He walked in the first, singled in the fourth, RBI single in the fifth. Not been able to get him out this afternoon. Bases remain loaded for the Terps in the sixth. The Iowa leading 6-3, but two down in the inning. Simpson's got the sign from Moss. First pitch. Called strike. What an outstanding breaking ball there from Simpson. Simpson's hat blows off towards Tello over at third like a tumbleweed crossing the road. Yeah, Shaw fourth in the Maryland record books for career home runs. Mm, mm, not, mm, mm. not to try to foreshadow here or anything. Keep it low, Jared. <laughs> Nothing in one is the count. The pitch. Swing and a miss. Ho! He just spun him into the turf with a slider low and in. That wasn't even close to being a strike until Shaw made it one by swinging and missing at it. 0-2's the count. Bases loaded and two outs. Bases loaded here. Two 
Simpson looking in for the sign from Moss. He's got it. The 0-2 feels it, deals it. Gone. Crushed to left center. Absolute no doubter. Grand slam for Matt Shaw. And the Terps have the lead. Seven to six. One ten exit velocity. That ball traveled five oh seven. That ball landed. Has it? We exaggerate a little bit. Sometimes that ball landed pretty close to the steps of Carver Hawkeye Arena over there. I mean, I he swings and misses. Zero and two. Now the Hawks have their work cut out for them. Couple of grand slams hit in the game. One by each team. Maryland's gives them the lead in the sixth. Simpson's got the sign for the 0-2. Here it comes. Way outside, ball one. What are the odds we could get a massive washout right now? Because <laughs> that's effectively where we are. Mm. That is Shaw's seventh multi-RBI game of the season. 1-2 from Simpson. That's low and away. Ball two. Boy, that ball was nuked. That's really sucked some of the energy out of Dwayne Banks field right now. I was going to have to counter the 9-1-2 in the bottom of the sixth. Hawks trail 7-6. Here's the 2-2 from Simpson. Way outside again, ball three. Got up on the count and an 0-2. But now falling down to a full count. Three balls, two strikes, bases empty with two outs. Here's the pitch from Simpson. Outside, ball four. Boy, that is your 0-2. Your 0-2 and give up a grand slam and your 0-2 and walk a hitter. I mean, that's... You, you got you to gotta finish, guys. I mean, you've, you've got them right where you want them. Uh, and whether you're, whether you're picking edges, whatever you're doing... Um, you've got to you've got to locate, and obviously with Shaw, he wasn't picking edges. That was that ended up being center center and demolished. But batter's Kevin Keister. Ball gets away from Moss. He'll throw it down to second to try to get him out, and out. he is out on the retag. As Woods slid past the bag at second, We're begging. and Moss threw him out. We're begging for replay. We don't have it. Sorry, guys. Coaches are trying to get a, a replay, but he's out at second. Yeah, he's going to negotiate, but there there's really no negotiation here. You you don't have a you don't have a recourse here. All right, we'll go to the bottom of the sixth. Maryland gets four, and they take the lead over Iowa, seven to six. Hawks have to answer right after this. This is Hawkeye baseball from Learfield. After a cancer diagnosis, it's natural to want to start treatment right away, but first. Get a second opinion from a team that specializes in your cancer. I'm Dr. George Weiner, director of University of Iowa Holden Comprehensive Cancer Center. Before you start treatment, you deserve to be confident you have the right diagnosis and know every option available to you. So whether it's with us or somewhere else, get a second opinion. It can change your care and your life. When you're in the Eastern Iowa area, be sure to visit and connect with the official local business partners of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The Hotel at Kirkwood Center, Iowa's premier luxury hotel, the Jill Armstrong team, Wiscogman Realty, the area's premier realtor, and Options Exteriors, your preferred local roofing and exterior company. Jill Armstrong and her team strive to make every buyer and seller at ease with the real estate process. Contact the Jill Armstrong team, Wiscogman Realty, for all of your real estate needs. Call 319-631-5455. Well, Maryland has taken the lead in the sixth inning. They're on top of the Hawkeyes, 7-6. to six. They'll go to the bullpen now and bring in right-handed pitcher Kenny Lipman. Kenny Lipman will make his 12th appearance on the season already. 1-0, he has started a game, has a save, 460 ERA, 15 and two-thirds innings, 13 hits, 10 runs, eight of those are earned, five walks, 16 strikeouts, opponents hitting 
280 against him. Fastball is going to run up in the upper 80s. Might touch 90. Good slider. Um, got a little funky delivery. Looks like he's coming out of the... Two-pitch two guy, huh? Two-pitch guy. Fastball slider. Uh, might be a full-time stretch guy. And just going to kind of come... Going to come kind of over the over the right-hand hitter's shoulder. So we'll have to be ready for a little different angle here from, uh, from Lippman. All right. Well, Iowa needs to answer. Giving up seven runs in the last two innings. Frazier will lead things off for the Hawkeyes. Against Lippman, first pitch. Frazier takes it outside corner, called strike. You were right when you just said outside. Yeah, I probably could have left off the corner part, huh? Yeah, clearly, <laughs> clearly the guy that mattered said it was on the corner. The 0-1. Frazier has to swing at that one, and he missed it, 0-2. It, this is the thing, just the, the strike zone today, maybe not as much on the inside, just shifted a little bit to the outside part yeah, for right-handed hitters. He's been very good, though. I mean, very it, consistent. Outstanding strike zone, really. The 0-2 to Frazier. Check swing. Did he go around? He did. Frazier's down on strikes for the first out in the Hawkeye sixth. Yeah, Frazier might have been been a matchup for Savakul, but boy, that was a uh, when I see, it, and it's funny how that sets up with the first pitch. You know, he, he dots the first pitch fastball that looks outside, but he gets strike one. Then he throws from the same slot, but he throws the breaking ball two times to follow that up and gets strike two and yep. check swing strike three. That's a good point. Here's Seeger's first pitch strike outside corner. Same thing that happened to Frazier happens to Seeger's here. Rain has stopped in Iowa City for now, and the sun is back out. We got enough wind, so it's uh, we might not be done at seven to six either. Yeah, a one to Seegers. That's a fastball outside, one and one. Obviously, if you're a Hawkeye fan, you, you clearly don't want it to be done yet. But but with the, the wind picking up and the weather moving around, it it would be wouldn't be surprising to see a few more. 1-1, one, one. Seegers hits a spinner off the end of the bat. It's going to go from foul territory to fair, and Seegers did not run to first. The first baseman grabs it and steps on the bag. Is this how this is going to go now, John? <laughs> ah, off the end of the bat, that thing was headed towards Mitchell Bow in the first base coach's box, and you could see it spin and spin, and it came about 5, 10 feet in front of the bag and came back fair. But now, that's, I think, twice now I've seen that, though, where Michael hasn't gotten out of the box on a ball that ended up fair. And um, I guess I'm a little little disappointed or surprised that uh, I'm not he, he wouldn't have beat that out anyway, but create some traffic and havoc, maybe. Yeah. Here's Huxdorf, 1-0 pitch on its way home to him. He fouls it off the leg of Schliger, and it's 1-1. One and one. I was mainly just hoping that that thing would stay foul. I don't, I don't know if the, what kind of force of nature brought that back in there, other than just some nasty spin. Once it cue balled over, you could just kind <laughs> of see that that was. It was almost like it was following a ramp, and so it, <laughs> it was coming back into play. So um, there, there wasn't much doubt. And, and good job by the Maryland players to stay away from it, let it yep. come fair, and then grab it. One ball, one strike with two outs in the Hawkeye six. The Iowa trailing 7-6. Huxdorf takes a good cut at this one, but missed it and fouled it back. One and two. Yeah, Hawks are going to have to create some some energy here. You know, Maryland is up on the dugout rail. They're chirping along. You know, they don't really have any fans here to speak of, but Iowa fans kind of sitting on their hands again. Dugout's a little quiet. The one two, Huxdorf hits it on the ground to third. Backhand play, throw on the run to first in time. Tip your cap there to Nick LaRusso. Heck of a play right there. Really well done. Thought mm. uh, thought the Hawks might catch a break there, but just a great throw. Have you put it up high and uh, got the third out? Iowa goes down one, two, three in the sixth. We'll head to the seventh with Maryland leading seven to six. We're back after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Hey everyone, I'm Mark Wahlberg and I have some exciting news to share. At Wahlburgers, we are all about bringing the family together to enjoy a great meal and have a great time. That's why right now, for a limited time, kids eat free every day at all Hy-Vee Wahlburger locations. Kids 12 and under can enjoy one free kid's meal with any purchase of an adult burger, sandwich, or entree salad. 
Bring the family to Wahlburgers and the Wahlburgers and High V stores, where right now kids can eat free. When you're in the Eastern Iowa area, be sure to visit and connect with the official local business partners of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The hotel at Kirkwood Center, Iowa's premier luxury hotel. The Jill Armstrong team with Skogman Realty, the area's premier realtor. And Options Exteriors, your preferred local roofing and exterior company. Handling all of your exterior needs from roofing, siding, windows, and gutters, they've got you covered. Providing free damage inspections and help filing insurance claims. Call 319-343-6376. Five, six, seven, due up for Maryland in the top of the seventh. They lead this one seven to six. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is Iowa Hawkeye Baseball. John Evans, John Leo in the broadcast booth at Dwayne Banks. Hawks trail 7-6. to six. Got to hold them here in the seventh as Keister will lead things off. First pitch from Simpson is a called ball inside. Hmm. All right. Probably, maybe, ish. I was having more fun 20 minutes ago, half hour ago. <laughs> Just saying. Well, let's let's... Take the first half of the game and then the last the last part of it, huh? Yeah. Simpson missing on a couple of pitches now, 2-0. and oh. How long of a hook do you think Simpson has here? Um, I, I think it just depends on how he looks. You know, right now it's just he, he's kind of struggling to command the zone even though he was ahead early in hitters last inning. But now all of a sudden again he's all over the place. Well, a leadoff walk would not help his his case, and it's 3-0. and oh. Agreed, and you've got... Uh, yeah, you got Jacob Henderson down there warming up again. And... Got to come in with a strike here to Keister, who was walked his last time up. Called strike. Upper, outer portion of the plate, three and one. That's kind of a get me across fastball, so. Can't really throw that again, right? No, you, w- <laughs> you wouldn't want to. Three balls and a strike pitch from Simpson. He did throw it again, and it's called a ball this time. Ball four. Just missed it a little bit higher that time. You're almost looking like he, Jarrett's just aiming it a little bit. You know, almost almost trying a little too hard to, to hit that spot. Cade Moss will take a walk out to talk to Simpson on the pitcher's mound as the sun starts to shine again in Iowa City, but not shining on the Hawkeyes at this moment, trailing seven to six. You know, 50-50 for Jared, 36 pitches, just 18 strikes right now. I mean, that's the, you know, we talk about it all the time. Strike one, strike one, strike one. Um, you know, saw it saw it in the midweek game, you, know, you gotta get ahead. Um, and in this case, you know, even when he's gotten ahead, he hasn't been able to finish the right. at-bats. Well, leadoff walk in the seventh for Maryland, squaring to bunt is Petritz, and it's a first pitch strike. Looks like Maryland trying to move that runner from first to second. Pitch on its way home. Oh, he swings at this one, pops it up down the left field line. Peterson sprinting forward. Seegers going back, and they run into each other. Seegers caught it. One out of the inning. Peterson was coming forward. Seegers going back. They sort of tripped over each other. Somehow Michael still caught it. I say good, fortunate um, on any number of fronts that they just barely kind of grazed each other. And uh, you know, one of the things that you, you usually think about with uh, with Iowa and really almost any sport is you know, that fundamentally sound, really good, um, you know, across the board, doing the little things right. And, you saw some bunt coverage things and some other things midweek, and boy, they, you get two players that uh, two key players that uh, cause some plays, yeah. cause each other some damage there with uh, without some communication. Well, Simpson gets the first out of the inning. Here's Hakopian. First pitch to him floats high and outside for a ball. Runner still at first. That's Keister. Keister. Not a stolen base threat. He hasn't even tried this year. 
Now's a good time. Boy, on command. He's got a short lead. He'd have to have a really good jump. Counts one and one. <laughs> off of off of the left-hander with a decent move. Right. <laughs> Saying you don't like his chances. Let's just go on first first move. You first just move. Make, just... A, make a decision. Hammer it. Commit to something, right? <laughs> exactly. Uh, Sell it. 1-1 one, one from Simpson to Hakopi, and here it is. Called strike at the knees. All right. Good job, Jared Simpson. You got another two-strike count. Go get him, right? Finish it up here. Yeah, I've had a bad week. I think you should go strike him out, throw him out here. And just, Love it. And just be done with it. Let's go. <laughs> well, we take that, man. Iowa trailing 7-6 to six in the seventh. Simpson set with the 1-2. Chopper to third. Tello charges it hard. Goes to second for one. On to first. For... No, they called him safe at first. We got the lead runner at second, but safe at first. Barely. Heck of a play by Tello. That ball had no chance. He to had turn... to go. Yeah, that, that ball had no chance to turn into a double play, and, and that was a very, very close play at first um, to being out of the inning. Really bang, bang play there at first. Just from my eye up here, looked like he might have had him, but safe over there. Two outs in the inning, runner on first for the Terps. They lead 7-6 in the top of the seventh. Here's Jacob Orr. He singled a few at-bats ago. First pitch from Simpson is low and in. Yeah, he had no intention of getting out of the way of that. If that was going to graze him, he was going to take it. one -oh pitch gets by Moss. Threw it low and outside. This time, Cade missed it. Goes off the glove and gets to the backstop. Runner advances to second in scoring position now, and that could be a big run, too. I was just about to look. Hakopian has four stolen bases, so a little bit of speed there. Mm -hmm. chance, to, chance to make a move, but made it easy for him now. Just that two-seam tail from, from a left-handed pitcher caused problems for Moss. He's got some work to do. Is that Simpson on the mound? Two balls, no strikes. Pitch. There it is. Called strike outside corner, two and one. Simpson's hat continues to fly off. He's got a nice head of lettuce on him, but he's going to need some tape or a chin strap or something to keep that hat on. K4 works with the uh, with the football squad, too. He needs a uh, chin, yeah. chin strap him up or... <laughs> Wind blowing basically from right to left on on Simpson, right in his face as he's in the stretch. Comes set with the 2-1, the pause, the pitch. Foul back to the screen, 2-2. Two and two. Let's go get him, Jared. That's an interesting observation, too, though, is, as Maryland has a left-hander coming in. Uh, it'll be, uh, you know, if they do end up bringing him in from the bullpen, just how much different that is, you know, because that, that wind is going to hit in the chest. It's hard. So does it stand you up? How does it affect yeah. your motion? There's more uh, to it than just carrying, than the ball carrying, right? Correct. 2-2, two, two, hit into right. Frazier's got a beat on it. He'll reach up, grab it. Out number three. We hold the Terps to nothing in the top of the seventh. We'll stretch things out at Dwayne Banks. Iowa trailing by one. We're back after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. We all love a good win, catching up with friends, saving money at the pump, soaking up the perfect Iowa day, sitting down to a really, really good meal. These are the everyday delights that make us smile. These are the moments that connect us all as Iowans. And these are the wins that, more often than not, start with Iowa's farm families and the crop they're growing. Because when corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Learn more about how to share your own wins at iowacorn.org backslash Iowans win. Congratulations, you're having a little girl. At that moment, everything changed. Our hopes and dreams for ourselves were instantly replaced by our hopes and dreams for her. We got life insurance policies from Shelter Insurance, so that regardless of what life throws at us, we'll still be able to provide the world to her. Visit shelterinsurance.com to find an agent to help you pick a policy that's right for you. Shelter Life Insurance Company, Columbia, Missouri. Bottom of the seventh inning, Hawks trailing by one. Maryland will go to the bullpen with a new pitcher. They'll bring in lefty Tommy Kane. Tommy Kane has 
Doesn't have a record. No wins, no <laughs> losses. I, mean, I guess having a pitcher with no record is a good thing, right? Yeah. I mean, you're way on top of the curve there. T- tenth, <laughs> tenth appearance on the season, 529 ERA, 17 innings pitched, 15 hits, 10 runs. 10 earned runs, 12 runs in total, six walks, 22 strikeouts. One of the things that I've noticed about, you know, the three pitchers that Maryland has brought into the game, very low walks, yeah. high strikeouts. Um, you know, and again, you saw Savakul get bombed in the first inning with free bases, but since they've kind of cleaned that piece up, it's been a much more um, Hawkeyes have to earn it type of game, and it's been harder to harder to do that so. which hey throwing us strikes i love it right we just we just gotta hit them All right we gotta do we gotta do our thing with it and and uh so now we'll see here if uh bio can get on tap here and and uh get this thing tied back up bottom seven maryland seven iowa six here's derigi first pitch strike to him on the outside corner john watch this watch this delivery from from kane he starts his windup, then he pauses, and now the 0-1 pitch, that's low and outside. He takes forever to get it home out of the windup. He yeah. steps to the side and then holds it and then begins everything else. Which is really hard with a guy that then throws 90-plus at you. Yeah, well, Derigi sends it right back where it came from. Base hit up the middle. Hawks have the tying run on first. 78 in, 88 out as Derigi sent it right Transfer back. of energy. <laughs> sent it right back that direction. You know, again, you've got it. Fastball is going to be in the low 90s. Um, you know, good curveball. Um, good slider and, and you know, maybe even a little bit of a call it a slurve action. So you're getting some some horizontal and vertical movement out of the mix. First pitch to Keaton Anthony called strike right down the middle. I dare you to throw that again, Mr. Kane. <laughs> Keaton Anthony, the sophomore from Hoshton, Georgia. You know, Kane is a little bit. Uh, Hold on a minute. Anthony drives it to left center. It's down for a base hit. Gets by the left fielder. And Derigi's at third. They're going to hold him there. It'll be a double for Keaton Anthony. And the Hawks have two in scoring position in the bottom of the seventh. Coach Heller throws up the stop sign there because at this point you're like, well, second and third, nobody out. No need to no need to run a big risk of getting a guy gunned at the plate. And you've got a, you've got a guy at the plate who had a pretty good at-bat last time. Right. Hit a home run his last time up. Boy, I always like watching the interaction between Coach Heller and Brennan DeRiggy when he's rounding third because Coach Heller's really got to put on the stop <laughs> sign to slow down Big Rig there at third. Here's Tello, a chance to give Iowa the lead with a base hit. First pitch to him. Strike called inside corner. Well, I talk about how much I like Gable Mitchell and his kind of full energy, and, you know, you think, okay, smaller guy, spark plug, that type of thing. Brennan DeRiggy has that. Right. I mean, he is full speed when he's running the bases all the time. Nothing and one. Pitch to Tello. Line drive caught by the what first baseman. Catch. Oh, a diving catch to his right. Rob Tello of extra bases. That, that would have given Iowa the lead. That ball was past him. Oh, hey, What a great, great play there by Hakopian. And probably even more importantly for the Hawkeye perspective, what a great play by both base runners to not get doubled off. That's true. Um, to not have taken a walk. We're going to get a quick little... Uh, a quick little chat. Tello crushed that. Absolutely demolished it. Pitching coach Mike Morrison makes a visit. Um, I don't know if this is more about, again, Petey's a guy that might be able to do some, uh, you know, some bat work here, you know, do something a little creative, but whew. Well, it certainly doesn't get any easier. You, you're kind of curious about what this discussion might be. Because it does not get any easier after Peterson uh, for the opponent. No. You got Honar there who, you know, can drive any pitch to any part of the park, right? And so Iowa trying to make him pay in the seventh. A leadoff single from DeRiggi, followed by a double by Keaton Anthony. Tello exit below that at 101. Yeah, I bet. Just Gee, dang it. <laughs> just demolished it. All right, Petey. He's got another chance here. Iowa trailing 7-6, bottom seven. What a bounce one. First pitch to Petey. That's low and in. Almost hit him. Good discipline. He got the hand started but was able to 
Slam on the brakes. One and zero. I should have been more specific with the bounce. I got the bounce part. But bounce away, huh? Yeah, bounce away. Backstop, dugout, up over the screen, anything. Sure. Bounce off that street out there in left center. How about that one? 1-0 pitch to Petey. Tapped foul to the left side. 1-1. One and one. Tying run is just at third base there. The go-ahead run at second. We're getting into the late innings at Dwayne Banks this afternoon. First of three with Maryland this weekend. Greg sings the seventh inning stretch. I think it is late inning. 1-1. One, one. Petey lays off again, and it's 2-1. They sent it down for a check. He didn't go. Yeah, if we get take me out to the ball game, I think it qualifies that does as late. Qual I think so. I think we're in that in that zone, aren't we? Two balls and a strike. Kane comes set. The lefty pitches. Peterson squares to bunt, pulls it back, and it's ball three. Just to give the pitcher a different look there, huh? Oh, well, again, with with Petey at the plate, handles the bat really well. Derigi, a, a smart, seasoned base runner. Uh, it might have been a little safety squeeze action there, but ball down low. Go ahead and take it. And... The 3-1. Three, one. Ball four, up at the eyes. Here we go, Sam Honar. He comes up with the bases loaded in the Hawkeye seventh. Iowa down by one. Listen, everybody wants the grand slam right here, and it'd certainly be great, but a, a single base hit, a sack a fly. Let's tie this one up. I want a two-run single. I, I mean, I'm not, yep. I'm not quite full grand slam greedy, but let's go get it. The obvious thing would be the, to, to hope for that, but got to find a way to at least tie this one up in the seventh. One out, bases loaded. Lefty on lefty matchup, pitch to Honar. Oh, Called man. strike way outside, and it's 0-1. And, and we saw that last inning where that just kind of set up the whole at-bat in a bad way for Frazier. Got to regroup, got to move on, Sam. Here we go with the 0-1. That skips to the plate, 1-1. One and one. Good block there by Schliger. Freeze. Yeah, he's, uh, you know, we talked about him early in the game, but he's really talked, he's, he's done a great job behind the plate. Um, caught a couple, caught a couple in bad places, yeah. and still just keeps on ticking. One ball, one strike. Pitch to Honar. Ground ball to the first baseman. He'll throw it home. It is high, but caught. Force out at home. Bases will still be loaded, but it'll be two outs for Cade Moss. Mm. I was still trailing by one. Got that fastball inside and really couldn't do anything with it. Um, tried to turn on it, but. Off the handle, I don't think he barreled that up at all. Yeah, exactly. It ended up just uh, kind of dribbling it down there. First baseman was in just a touch, too, so uh, made that a really easy decision and play for him, even though the throw wasn't the greatest. All right, Cade, find a way on. First pitch to Moss. It hit him. Got him. Tie game. Ha ho. That was dirty. <laughs> And, and even worse, Sligger caught it off the thigh then as well. So Hawks steal one back. Boy, you think, think oh, Rand, rally's over. Boy, bad things are going to happen. And it's just what like, in the world is going on? <laughs> we'll, have a, we'll have a pitching change now. Uh, bases remain loaded with two outs. We're tied at seven in the seventh. That'd pay out pretty well at the casino, wouldn't it? <laughs> All right, we'll take a pitching change break. We'll be back right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At Oak Mall, our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at oakmall.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! At U.S. Cellular, we think phones are great, but they're not always great for us. Because while they connect us to so much, they can also distract us from, well, us. The us that actually laughs out loud with each other instead of just texting it. That knows being in the same room doesn't always mean being together. So let's find us again by putting our phones down. Not forever, just for five. Five days, five hours, even five minutes. Join U.S. Cellular and the Phones Down for Five Challenge. Find out more at uscellular.com slash find us. All tied up in Iowa City. Hawks and Terps, seven apiece. 
In the bottom of the seventh, pitching change for Maryland. They'll go with the tall righty, Nigel Belgrave. Nigel does have a record. He does have a record. He does have a record. 2-0, 321 ERA, 11th appearance on the season. He's thrown 14 innings, 11 hits, 6 runs, 5 earned, 7 walks to 22 strikeouts again. So kind of that same idea. You know, he's going to bring it low to mid-90s, 92, 95. Um, does have, you know, he hasn't shown it in the walks, but the last year had some control issue. So, you know, really going to be important for Frazier. You know, see if he can get ahead in the count, you know, get some control of the at-bat. If he sees a fastball he likes right away, you know, if, if Belgrave tries to go after him right away with that 92, 94 mile an hour fastball and Frazier likes it, you know, drive it somewhere right away. But, you know, if you can get ahead, 1-0, 2-0, 2-1, control the at-bat from there. Hawks could take the lead here. Frazier, one of the team captains from Cedar Rapids, just up the road. I think Cedar Rapids Jefferson still claims him. First pitch to Frazier. That's outside. Came in there pretty hot, but missed. And Braden lays off. Ball one. Two outs, bases loaded. Hawks can take the lead with any advancement of runner. Yeah, scooted that first one in there at 95. Belgrave is ready. The pitch. Frazier pops it up. Right center field. And the center fielder, Lambros, will call everybody off and make the catch to end the inning. But the Hawks, they tie it up seven apiece. Hawks and Terrapins will bring you the eighth right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. We all love a good win, catching up with friends, saving money at the pump, soaking up the perfect Iowa day, sitting down to a really, really good meal. These are the everyday delights that make us smile. These are the moments that connect us all as Iowans. And these are the wins that, more often than not, start with Iowa's farm families and the crop they're growing. Because when corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Learn more about how to share your own wins at iowacorn.org backslash Iowans win. At U.S. Cellular, we think phones are great, but they're not always great for us. Because while they connect us to so much, they can also distract us from, well, us. The us that actually laughs out loud with each other instead of just texting it. That knows being in the same room doesn't always mean being together. So let's find us again by putting our phones down. Not forever, just for five. Five days, five hours, even five minutes. Join U.S. Cellular in the Phones Down for Five Challenge. Find out more at uscellular.com slash find us. Top of the eighth inning, John Evans, John Leo from the broadcast booth at Dwayne Banks Field. We are tied at seven with the Terps. Got to hold them here. Jared Simpson will return to the mound for the Hawkeyes. Both teams have done a really nice job of getting the leadoff hitter on base today, uh, both four for seven. So, you know, again, just, just get into now the eighth, ninth inning tie ball game. You know, get that first out, you know, attack. Go get it here, especially as Simpson will be facing number nine in the order here. Don't uh, don't set a table for the top guys. And that's kind of what happened in that sixth, that big sixth inning for Maryland. Lambros will lead off, and, and Simpson hit him the last time, and then he scored on the grand slam from Matt Shaw. Don't want to see Shaw up again with, with anybody on base, so take care of business here. First pitch from Simpson to Lambros is a call and strike. Started high, dropped in there, and it's 0-1. You know, this is a good spot for Jared. You know, I know we kind of looked at each other with uh, uh, maybe some surprise that he's rolling back out there, but this is his spot now to go ahead, lay claim to it. Hey, it hasn't been my best day, but I'm tough enough now to go get it mm -hmm. done. Great pitch there for strike, and now he's ahead 0-2. We've been here. Now he's got to finish the at-bat. Talk about the coaching staff trusted in their guys uh, to go to Simpson again. No balls, two strikes to Lambros. He struck out twice today. Pitch from Simpson. Shot foul to the right side and out of play. Good fastball there. Jerry tried to sneak it past him on the outer half. Good piece of hitting to get a make some contact and stay alive. What do you think about Barry in that slider? Got to be careful you don't hit him. Yeah, that's, that's the only thing that scares me is he's sitting right on top of the plate. 0-2, tap to the left side. Tello gives chase, but it's foul. We'll do it again. And you can see that's, you know, I talked about kind of that approach. If I'm a hitter on, on Jared, you can see 
Looks like his toes are a little bit off the inside line of, of the batter's box this time, but he's he's tight on there. Simpson is ready with the 0-2. Here it comes. Oof. This one's drilled to left center. It's trouble. Huxdorf is at the wall, and it's gone. Mm. Lambros. Home run. Terps lead 8-7 in the eighth. I mean, I hate to say it. It just it can't happen. I mean, those two home runs are on 0-2 pitches. Uh, Right down the middle too. Yeah, I mean, he just—that's a—that's a ninety mile an hour fastball that's that's up and over the plate to a right-hander. I mean, it's it. Now to the top of the order, Hawks trailing once again, eight seven. Simpson goes outside corner to start with Schliger. And I'll go back to the t I'll go back to the bottom of the inning before you know, second and third, nobody out, and Hawks were. Fairly lucky to tie the game, uh, just not taking advantage of the opportunity there. Here's a ground ball to Honar at second. He welcomes it in and throws it over to Derigi. One down. And so you know, you know, you go from you go from really not uh, not doing all you could have done or should have done with with your at bat, um, and then you know when you come out to the mound and, and not uh, not finish off hitters that. Then when Jared looks back today as Coach Heller comes to take the ball from him, that, that's going to be what Jared's probably most disappointed about is, is just not finishing those at-bats. We'll have a pitching change. Jacob Henderson will be the new Iowa pitcher in the top of the eighth inning. Terps lead this one 8-7. We're back after this pitching change break. Listening to Iowa Hawkeye baseball from Learfield. Hey everyone, I'm Mark Wahlberg and I have some exciting news to share. At Wahlburgers, we are all about bringing the family together to enjoy a great meal and have a great time. That's why right now, for a limited time, kids eat free every day at all Hy-Vee Wahlburger locations. Kids 12 and under can enjoy one free kid's meal with any purchase of an adult burger, sandwich, or entree salad. Bring the family to Wahlburgers and the Wahlburgers and Hy-Vee stores where right now, kids can eat free. You probably know that a natural gas leak smells like rotten eggs, but what does a gas leak look or sound like? If you hear a whooshing or hissing sound, see dirt, dust, or water spraying from an area, or you get dizzy or queasy, leave the area immediately, then call 1-800-595-5325 once you're safely away. See midamericanenergy.com for more safety tips. Paid for by the customers of MidAmerican Energy. Well, I was down again, this time 8-7 in the 8th. Have to go to the bullpen once again this afternoon. We'll go with uh, Jacob Henderson. Jacob Henderson's ninth appearance on, on the season, a 150 ERA. He's thrown six innings, hasn't given up a hit yet, has given up a run. It was earned, walked four, struck out eight. Uh, a couple wild pitches, a couple hit batters. Uh, but Jacob's done a really nice job. Struggled a little bit early in the year, was battling some... Uh, uh, just some not 100% health, and you know you make some adjustments, and once he's kind of gotten that squared away, he's been outstanding. Henderson starts with a strike to Nick LaRusso. LaRusso mainly cold today. He singled in a run in the fifth, but he struck out every other time he's been up. Henderson's 0-1 pitch is on the outside corner 0-2. Good that's, job by Jacob. That single, though, was enough to extend. He's got a 24-game hitting streak. And now, so I mean, it's uh, that's a program best, I believe. I believe so. Seems good. Yep. Oh, two from Hendo. That's outside. Ball one. <laughs> I like how Jake. If you like this one, will you like this one? <laughs> yeah. That one was in the opposite batter's box. But to be honest, Cade Moss kind of set up out there. That was the plan to go way out there. He's got that little si sidearm slinger. The one two. Popped up out of play over there towards the first base side. Jacob isn't going to Jacob isn't going to blow you away with the uh, with the velocity, but uh, the the movement, the action, the the location. I mean, that's the, uh, the that's the calling card for Jacob. Henderson set with another one two. Here it comes. This is smoke to center. Huxdorf back again at the wall. 
and it is gone. Well, Maryland leads the Big Ten in home runs hit. They came in with 47. They've got three today. 50 home runs on the year for the Terps. They lead at 9-7. Yeah, that one leaves at 104, goes 408 right back to center field. And um, you know, the one before that was over to the left center field, went 400. But yeah, just, uh, and, and now you get Matt Shaw. So uh, no real rest here for uh, uh, for Jacob. He's going to have to bear down and, and still needs to get two outs. First pitch is bunted foul to the left side. Henderson starts out on top, 0-1. All three home runs for Maryland today have come with two strikes. Nice. Terps up by two in the eighth. Iowa will answer with the top of the order coming up. A one pitch outside from Henderson. Yeah, I guess the previous two were 0 oh and 2. At least that one was 1 and 2. Just had it float it just a bit high. Shaw swings through the fastball from Henderson, making the count one and two. Bases are empty with one out. So one and two, who has who where they want them? Yeah, I've, <laughs> I've typically been saying that it's an advantageous position for the for the pitcher, but today it just hasn't been the case. One of those strange phenomenon in this game. One, two pitch is outside. Good opportunity to try to get Shaw to chase it, but didn't. Two balls, two strikes. Got to be careful here. Still have a little breeze. It's laid down somewhat now, though. But Henderson's 2-2. Hit in the air to right. Frazier tracking back. He's towards the track. He's at the wall, and that's gone. Another home run for Maryland. The second of the game for Shaw. Their fourth of the game as a team. And another one with two strikes. That was a good piece of hitting. Um, you know, stayed with uh, stayed with the outside breaking ball, just drove it out. I mean, that was um, that one might have been a little bit more wind dated than some of the other ones. Is the exit velocity just 98 miles an hour carries 353 is all, um, but well positioned and helped push out. Henderson's first pitch to Matt Woods is outside. Ball one. The Terps go back to back, and they lead by three now. Ten to seven. Fit three home runs in the inning. Check swing. He went around, and it's one and one. I'm going to look in the guide to see if that's good. Feels like that's good. I'd like it to not be as mm. good as it, as it is. Well, but. we're going to need something good coming our way in the bottom <laughs> half of these innings, right? Here's one tapped foul into the Iowa on-deck circle. And again, two strikes on a Maryland hitter. Yeah, that might be that might be the most impressive stat of the whole bunch is all four home runs have come with two strikes. And only that one was 2-2. Two, two. I mean, only that one was even kind of even close to even. 1-2. This has popped up but not going to get out of here as Seeger's at shortstop. He's camped under it. Now he's still moving and he's got it. Two down in the inning. Anyway, you know, we talked about that early in the game. You know, they only ball they really hit hard early in the game was uh, the one they ricocheted off Brody. Yep. But but then they started hitting some line drives up the middle with no elevation. Well, now they're getting some elevation. And, and uh, you know, between solid contact and, and favorable conditions, they've, uh, they've bombed Hawkins' drive out there. First pitch strike to Keister, 0-1. I was just going to ask, because it is Hawkins' drive, right? I think we, we asked that question, you and I both. Gosh dang it, I'm going to have to pull up Google Maps. <laughs> you think, think as long as I've lived here, I'd know this. As often as we drive it. <laughs> I should know how to get there. I don't know. I don't know to tell anybody the road. One ball, one strike, two down in the inning. Maryland 10-7. to seven. They've got the lead. Three home runs in the inning, all of the solo variety. Henderson missing outside, ball two. Yeah, that one was Hawkins' drive. Shaw's first one probably went all the way down Elliott Drive. <laughs> yeah, that one got that side street. Yeah, it got onto Elliott Drive, but the other ones are just Hawkins'. Two balls and a strike. Pitch from Henderson. That's outside ball three. Keep peppering them with uh, Seegers, Huxdorf, and Derigi do up in the Hawkeye eighth. Trailing 10-7. 
Offensive explosion today. 3-1 pitch, found back into the glove. 3-2. Got to be honest, I wasn't expecting a ton of, of uh, home runs, a ton of runs to be scored in today's matchup. Maybe the rest of the weekend, sure, you can see it, but not today. Right. Both pitchers with ERAs in the twos. 3-2, swing and a miss. Henderson got him to end the top of the eighth, but it's three solo home runs for Maryland, all coming with two strikes, and they lead it 10-7. Top of the order due up for Iowa in the bottom of the eighth. We're back after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. You probably know that a natural gas leak smells like rotten eggs, but what does a gas leak look or sound like? If you hear a whooshing or hissing sound, see dirt, dust, or water spraying from an area, or you get dizzy or queasy, leave the area immediately, then call 1-800-595-5325 once you're safely away. See midamericanenergy.com for more safety tips. Paid for by the customers of MidAmerican Energy. Woo! Got my nachos, got my big TV, and my favorite chair. It's game time. But you know, the only thing that would make it a little better is if I could listen to my local broadcasters while watching the game. Oh, hello. You must have wished for your game to be synced with TV and radio. I sure did. Do you have a DVR? You bet. Do you have a streaming device? <laughs> yeah. Blammo. Your game is now synced. It's that easy. Oh, boy. To see if you can get synced, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. SyncMyGame.com? SyncMyGame.com. Maryland 10, Iowa 7, bottom of the eighth inning. Hawks have to answer. Try to get back into this one late against the Terps. It'll be the top of the order. Seegers, Huxdorf, and DeRiggy to get things going. You know, Belgrave sported a 750 ERA last year, so it's not uh, uh, certainly not like he's going to be untouchable here. He's been been better this year, but the Hawks need to really now buckle in and, and kind of maintain, you know, maintain that discipline that yeah, they do have nine hits. They, they've done a good job. They've nine hits. They've taken three walks, you know, so they've a couple of hit batters. So they've done a good job. Well, you get late into the game like this, you got to just find a way on and chip away. You know, I understand kind of running out of outs to work with, but uh, top of the order. See if he can get after it. Scored five on Maryland in one inning earlier today. Seegers has already worked a 2 and 0 count. On Belgrave. Well, that's kind of the, the scouting report is he can be um, erratic. Mm, called strike up and in, two and one. You know, he, he, it's, he's kind of one of those guys that's either really good where you're like, oh, geez, it's it's the good Nigel, and then sometimes you get the, the other one. and. Nest a few times here. Hawks will look for the other one here yeah. and, and, you know, maybe try to take advantage of, of uh, you know, throws one of those. You know, if he can throw a get me over here and or, you know, if he just tries to aim one and, and walks anybody. Three balls and a strike. Seegers will be all eyes on this one. Called strike outside corner. Full count now. This kind of feels like setting the tone for the the ending of this game. Got to find a way on, Michael. Here we go. The 3-2. That's low and outside. Ball four. Good take there. Belgrave came with a little something extra. Cranked that one up to 96. But missed the zone. You know, obviously in this part of the lineup, Hawks have Hawks have some pop kind of, well, let's see, one, two, three, four. Next five guys, six guys, all have enough pop to bring you close here. So it's just, it's it's a numbers game. Get enough base runners here. Give yourself a chance. Throw up, the pitch is outside. Throw down to first. Try to get Seegers on the backside. Not quite in time. The pitch was wild enough. It was almost a good pitch out to make that yeah. throw. You know, it's like catchers. You're know, kind of uh, your slicker. It's like, well, I'm, I'm here already. I might, might as, as well, well sling it down there. See what happens. Seegers has a great lead at first. They'll throw one over in a pickoff move. Michael's back, okay. Hawks are down by three. Tying run in the on-deck circle. Hawksdorf's got to find a way on. Belgrave is slow to the plate, but I'm just I'm not sure if this is a spot you want to take the chance. 1-0 pitch. That's outside, 2-0. I think you got a red light here, don't you? I, I think you have red light. I think you have your, you know, I think I think you have Seegers. Make sure he's 
he's in just kind of the safe zone as far as a lead goes. No need to do anything too crazy here. 2-0. Huxdorf took it right down the middle. 2-1. and one. Had to have the red light there. Kyle swings at that one, doesn't he? Kyle swings at that one <laughs> 95% of the time, unless Coach Heller's threatening to take his bat away in that case. So. Two balls and a strike. They'll check on Seegers again. Nobody out in the inning. Iowa down 10-7, bottom eight. Catcher setting up a bit outside. The pitch to Huxdorf is a called strike. Fastball looked low. Two and two. Huxdorf's going to have to hurry back into the box. He got called out at Illinois State in a similar situation. Took too long to get in there. Can't do that again. 2-2 two, two on its way to Huxdorf. Drives this one to center. Going to have to keep carrying Come back on. towards the wall. Get going, baby. It is caught. He robbed it. He robbed the home run in left center. That one was gone. And Lambros brought it back in. Wow. So now we've seen a... Michael Seeger's cue ball down to first base that spins back fair, and we've seen Maryland pull the ball back in the ballpark to keep this a three-run lead as that ball travels 397 and needed 398. Wow. First pitch to Derigi's a called strike outside corner. My goodness, Lambros is having a heck of a game. He's hit a home run. He brought one back, like you said, John. Huxdorf needed to hit that. A little bit farther, a little bit more to left or right. I don't know. It had to be farther. Uh, Lambros had that tracked. He was kind of there on the wall, so I think he's going to make the – he had it sized up, mm. so it was – it just needed to get out of his range. A one pitch to Derigi's a ground ball to the right side. First baseman charges it, takes a funny hop on him. Derigi will stop in the base path. And hold on a minute. Interference on the pitcher. So the pitcher runs in front of DeRiggy, forcing him to stop. He was tagged, but not going to be out. We'll have runners on first and second for the Hawkeyes. Here's Keaton Anthony, and the head coach, Rob Vaugh, is going to meet the first base umpire at the third baseline in front of, in between the home plate and third base. He needs an explanation. He can't believe it. Well, and DeRiggy's out. If the pitcher stays away, he's out because first baseman's going to pick the ball up. He's just going to tag DeRiggy, and it's done. But as soon as he kind of veers in front of him, um, he didn't have too much bearing on the play. But Derigi, being, again, a fifth-year smart player, stops, which he probably would have done anyway. Yeah. <laughs> but he stops, and then now all of a sudden it's, well, I stopped because that guy ran in front of me, and he didn't have the ball. He can't do that to me. And so now you've got interference. And obviously this is a giant spot uh, for Keaton Anthony. Well, Keaton has a grand slam in the game. How about a three-run shot to tie this one up? He's the tying run in the bottom of the eighth. First pitch to Keaton. That's low and outside. Ball one. That is one of the, I mean, boy, what a pitch there. Caught some caught some breaks and, and uh, had some go the other way, but that one gets Keaton ahead. 1-0 to Anthony, golfed into left field, down, into the corner, base hit. Here comes Seegers. He's going to score. Derigi's at third. It's an RBI double. Keaton Anthony, not done yet. Hawks are in business, runners. Now you've got the tying run back out there in scoring position again. Had this last inning. Hawks couldn't maximize it. Up to Tello here to make sure they get their next, uh, their next fair batch. Can't be, obviously can't be done now, but... Just keep piling it on here. All right, Raider. Tello stands in. He's got a couple of hits today, a single and a home run. He's up with one out. Runners on second and third. Hawks down by two. Belgrave ready. First pitch to Tello right down the middle of called strike. 96 mile an hour. Come hit me. <laughs> mm. I, like the, I like the confidence. My stuff is better than what you can do. Tell you don't always see take them, but took that one. Corners in for Maryland. This pitch is outside, one and one. Sam Peterson on deck for the Hawkeyes. Hawks, plenty of, plenty of opportunity in this space to score. 
Iowa down 10-8. 1-1 pitch to Tello. Fouled it off the catcher's mask. Schligger's taking a beating back there. I've always thought Cade Moss was tough, but (laughs) Schligger's moving up the list of toughest guys I've seen. Holy cow, is he taking a beating and just keeps keeps putting the helmet back on and the mask back over top and calling another pitch. One ball, two strikes. That's the count to Raider Tello. The pitch popped it up. Shallow center. In fact, it's going to carry a bit. Lambros camped under it. He's got it. DeRiggi will tag. He will score. Hawks down 10-9. Anthony still out there at second with two outs. You want more, but that's you know a good at bat. You know, down in down in the count was able to uh, to keep firing, and and that'll leave it up to Sam Peterson to see if he can uh, even it up this inning. Peterson's had a, a nice day. He's reached on a fielder's choice in a walk. He homered in the first. Maryland ten, Iowa nine, bottom eight. Two outs, first pitch to him. Check swing. He went around. And it's a strike. Anthony's out there at second. Big gap in right center for Peterson, but not really a push hitter. Keaton, not the speediest, but he'll get a good jump on any contact. That's right. The 0-1, Petey fouls it off to the right side. Gets out of play. It's nothing and two. Petey's a... Petey's a high strikeout guy, 23 strikeouts. See if he can adjust his approach here on 0-2. Pops it foul again. He's choked up on the bat. The catcher really setting up outside, probably scouting report to go with the slider low and outside. But Peterson's made the adjustment the past few weeks. Yeah, you've got to think if you're Maryland, you can get him to chase. You can make him expand his strike zone. Um, See how it, uh, what Sam can do. Here's the 0-2. That's way outside, and a spinning catch made by Schligger behind the plate. It's another one of those that might ricochet off the backstop so fast he'd have a chance at third. Yeah. (laughs) Saw that down in Lubbock. One ball, two strikes. Belgrave is set. The pitch to Peterson. That's outside again. Ball two. Sam has expanded his strike zone on on fastballs before, but... Those really aren't that competitive, not really that tempting to him, so he's done a good job. Now he's got it back where he's got a good chance. Peterson hits this on the ground to third. Backhand play, long throw across to first in time to retire Peterson and end the eighth inning. Hawks get a couple, trail by one as we head to the ninth. We'll be back after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At U.S. Cellular, we think phones are great. But they're not always great for us. Because while they connect us to so much, they can also distract us from, well, us. The us that actually laughs out loud with each other instead of just texting it. That knows being in the same room doesn't always mean being together. So let's find us again by putting our phones down. Not forever, just for five. Five days, five hours, even five minutes. Join U.S. Cellular in the Phones Down for Five Challenge. Find out more at uscellular.com slash find us. Knowing that I can make a difference in my patients' lives keeps me motivated every single day. Hi, I'm Dr. Kanya Ferguson at University of Iowa Healthcare. With academic medicine, we see the toughest cases, so we're always innovating. And we bring the best minds together to collaborate so there's more brain power focused on you because that leads to exceptional care for our patients and our community. See how at UIHC.org. Top of the ninth inning, Iowa and Maryland in a tight ball game. For now, the Terps have the lead at 10-9. to Hawkeyes will go to the bullpen. Luke Llewellyn coming in for the black and gold. Appearance number 10 for Louie. He's 1-0 on the season, a 2.25 ERA. Does have a save, 12 innings pitch, 6 hits, 3 runs. They've all been earned, 8 walks, 17 strikeouts. Opponents hitting just 146 against him. And, boy, it's going to be his job to... Leave it right here. Got to have a zero. Got to have a zero. Leave it right here. Maryland scored 10 runs in the last four innings. Mm. Put up a zero now. Get to the get to the bottom of the inning, you know, where one swing can tie it up. And if you get a base runner and then the one right swing, you can just walk it off and be done with it. And, and get out of here, right? Llewellyn has been 
very good for the Hawkeyes this season. He'll face the bottom portion of the order, 6-7-8. Petrutz will lead things off for the Terps. You know, and really, again, at this, at this point, it's, you know, throw strikes, get guys. I mean, <laughs> I know Maryland's hit four home runs, but, you you know, get ahead, execute your pitch, uh, you know, go get it done. Uh, Don't give free bases. I know you, you hate, you hate three solo home runs in the last inning, but there were no, there were no walks. There were no errors. There were no extra things to really make that hill huge. Good pitch there as he starts off with a strike, but, you know, that's the, that's the, that's the difference between an insurmountable hill and one that you can still win a game at with. Left-handed hitter today is 0 for 3. Did walk in the fourth. He struck out a couple of times. Count is 1 and 1. Llewellyn, the right-handed pitcher, operates out of the stretch. 1-1. One, one. Rip down the right field line and just foul. Close. Hawks have really shown about everything on the – if you're looking at a uh, – if you're looking at the face of a clock from a pitching angle, the Hawks have shown everything from about 9 o'clock all the way over to 3 o'clock. And mm-hmm. I think about the only thing they could get a little more, if they brought in Kate Obermuller to get a submarine from the left, yeah. that might be the only only way you get even farther over there to 3 o'clock. But. One ball, two strikes. Llewellyn is ready. And the pitch, again, down the right field line into the batter's cage. We'll do it again at 1 and 2. Well, in the red shirt junior from Urbandale, came here from Kirkwood, spent some time with the Eagles. Todd Rhyme up there. One ball, two strikes. Llewellyn is set. The pitch. This one's in the corner again to right and foul. He's got Llewellyn timed up, doesn't he, John? I know he's pulling him foul, but he's really got a beat on him for the fastball. Well, he's done a good job. You know, the pitch before that, he threw him the off-speed pitch, kind of low and out of the zone, was able to go down and, and still get it, hit it in the same spot. Now I think you might start looking location. Can you get him outside and have him just roll over one? Again, down the right field line. Just peppering foul territory over there. One and two. It keeps, keeps continuing. One Allen the, will have to make an adjustment. Right? One of these guys is stubborn. <laughs> Petrutz hasn't well, really does, made, does being stubborn ever pay off, John? Petrutz I don't know. hasn't really made an adjustment either. Yeah. <laughs> Neither's Luke. One, two. This one's popped up down the left field line. Got a chance at this one. Peterson moving over, and he's got it right along the wall in foul territory. And that's what I just kept feeling like. It's like, okay, he's rollover hooking every ball. If you just get him on the outside part of the plate, he's gonna either he's either gonna roll an easy ground ball to Honar or he's gonna poke one down the left field line. Fortunately, there was enough turf over there, and Petey is speedy enough that he was able to track it down. And he was on a full sprint when he caught that too, and was running out of room. Here's Hakopian, right-handed hitter, first pitch from Llewellyn. This one's popped up on the infield. Derigi and Honar come together. Honar, he's got it. Two down. That was a little easier out than the last at bat. One pitch to get rid of him. <laughs> <laughs> now finish it off here. No, yeah. no reason to get to uh, Lambros as he's had a heck of a day. So it'll be Honar, Moss, and Frazier, barring any changes that the Hawkeyes might make. Due up in the bottom of the ninth. Ten to nine, Maryland with the lead. Here's the pitch from Llewellyn, tapped foul to the left side by Orr. I predict at least one change. Yeah, see if Iowa mixes things up with the batting order when they get into the box the next time. We're getting a little cloudier. We might be extending our window here again. 0-1 pitch just outside, evening the count at 1. We'll take on these Terrapins tomorrow. 2:05 first pitch. Iowa and Maryland. Keaton Anthony gets the nod. He'll start for the Hawkeyes tomorrow. One ball, one strike. Llewellyn ready, the pitch. Fouled out of the stadium, straight back, one and two. How do you feel about that 205? Are we going to be warm enough? Are we going to need snow removal again? Well, yeah, tomorrow's supposed to be chilly, isn't it? Yes. Mid-40s? Yes. Just can't catch a break with the weather, can we? <laughs> we, we have not had any luck at all so far this year. 
Not at home, especially. Llewellyn's 1-2, shot into center. Huckstorf sprinting, sprinting, sprinting. It's over his head. It'll go off the wall. Huckstorf gets it in quickly. It's a two-out double for Maryland. They're not done yet in the top of the ninth. Well, you don't see Huck not be able to run one down. That well struck. It looked like he, I think Huck thought he had a beat on it, and that ball just kind of kept moving, kept carrying out there. Again, you had almost a 100-mile-an-hour exit below on that one. It's just driven out. Good pitch by Luke, low and outside. Um, just stayed with it, and, I mean, Maryland team can really hit. 11 hits today. I was got 10. These are two offensive teams. Here's Lambros, their nine hitter. First pitch called strike up and in. Lambros hit a home run his last time up in the eighth. Yeah, you don't really expect a Friday game to go this route, but boy has it. 10-9, to nine, Maryland with the lead in the ninth. Llewellyn's 0-1 offering. Popped up right center. Frazier and Huxdorf come together. Who's going to make the play? It's Frazier. He's got it for the third out. We'll see what the Hawkeyes have in the bottom of the ninth. We held the Terps to nothing in the top half. Iowa trailing 10-9. We're back after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At MidAmerican Energy, we want to help keep you safe around power lines and electrical equipment. Always assume a power line is energized, even if it's on the ground. To avoid the risk of an accidental shock or electrocution, avoid touching a power line with anything. And when you see high voltage warnings on transformers and substations, stay away. We care about you and your safety. Get more tips at midamericanenergy.com. Paid for by the customers of MidAmerican Energy. Hey everyone, I'm Mark Wahlberg and I have some exciting news to share. At Wahlburgers, we are all about bringing the family together to enjoy a great meal and have a great time. That's why right now, for a limited time, kids eat free every day at all Hy-Vee Wahlburger locations. Kids 12 and under can enjoy one free kid's meal with any purchase of an adult burger, sandwich, or entree salad. Bring the family to Wahlburgers and the Wahlburgers and Hy-Vee stores where right now, kids can eat free. Bottom of the ninth inning, last chance for Iowa. Trailing Maryland 10-9. They've got their closer into the game. We'll get to him in just a second. But first, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is Iowa Hawkeye Baseball. All right, new pitcher in for... Maryland is Dave Falco. He's their closer. Falco's 1-0 on the season in 10 appearances. He does have a save, a 691 ERA, 14 and a third innings, giving up 13 hits, 14 runs, 11 earned, 11 walks, 10 strikeouts, opponents hitting 236. It'll be really important. Make him throw strikes, and then when he does, get after it. He's got a he's gonna come in 90, low 90s with the fastball, slider. Change up, uh, but's really struggled kind of with his off-speed command. So see that fastball, hit that fastball. Good fastball hitter in Sam Honar. He'll get the first look at the Maryland closer. Tall righty. First pitch to Honar. Swing and a miss. He was trying to tie the game. A little surprised he swings at the first pitch, but fastball in her half. Got one he thought he liked, thought he could handle, but tied him up a little. 0-1 to Honar. Fouled back. 0-2. Went with a spinner there. Throws it hard at 87. Yeah, that's an interesting one. You know, when you've got that, you know, if he gave something a little extra to the slider or, or what he did there, but you know, outfield is really deep. They're in a no-doubles version here. No balls, two strikes. Pitch to Honar. Oh, it almost hit him. He backed out of the way of it. Ball one. Really want to see Sam take that one in the shin, but that's boy, easy. that's a hard place to take it. Well, exactly. Really, it's super easy for me to say sitting here and not having to worry about my shin tomorrow. Catcher setting up outside. One two to Honar. That's in again. Almost hit him. Two and two. So Sam's worked back, and you can see Falco completely missed his spot there from where. Where the catcher was setting up, I mean, missed it by missed it by 20, 24 inches for where he was really trying to hit it. Got to be ready for anything here, Sam. 
Two balls, two strikes, the pitch. Swing and a miss. And that's the hard part. You know, we've, we've talked about guys that are effectively wild. Brody Brecht has shown signs of that early in the season of, of I'm nowhere, I'm nowhere, I'm nowhere, and now all of a sudden I'm 94 upper part of the strike zone and um, got that past him there. One down in the inning. Here's Cade Moss. Moss has been hit by a couple of pitches today. Iowa trailing 10-9. First pitch to Moss is just high. Just high. Ish. Looks like it fits in that tic-tac-toe board that you talk about, John. I do. But, you know, we <laughs> talk a lot about they don't like them. Umpires don't like that top row. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes you see it, sometimes you don't. 2-0 and now. Braden Frazier stands on deck for the Hawkeyes. Iowa trailing 10-9, bottom nine. Their last chance in game one of the series. Against Maryland. So we got a little less wind blowing around. Moss will watch this one go by for a strike on the outside corner, two and one. See, are you happier about that one? He didn't give him the top of the tic tac toe, but he gave him the middle out of the tic tac toe. No walls on that outside corner, is there? <laughs> <laughs> it's a uh, it's a stretched wall, rubber wall. Falco ready with the two one fouled out of play over there. Towards the indoor track, two and two. Moss has to protect now. Good battle back from Falco. Saw this in the last at bat. He was able to strike Honar out. See if Moss can fare a little bit better. The two, two. Poked foul again down the right field line. Find a way on. Put some pressure on him. The 2-2. Two -two. That's high and outside. Ball three. All right. Come on, Cade. Find a way here. Cade's kind of funny. Doesn't, uh, doesn't walk a ton. Um, Could use one here, John. The 3-2. Oh, my goodness. Just high and outside, I guess. Ball four will take it. <laughs> Caught a break there. That'll And that'll bring up pinch hitter and a pinch runner. Gable Mitchell into the game to run it first. Ben Wilmus will pinch hit for the Hawkeyes in the ninth. So you put really exceptional speed down at first. Not a ton of base stealing experience in college and then you put a guy that can handle the bat pretty darn good at the plate and Ben Wilmus. Gotta be smart over there the freshman Gable Mitchell a couple of Iowa kids gonna have their chance to leave a mark on this one Mitchell from Iowa City at first Wilmus from Johnston First pitch strike to him. One down in the inning. Ben pitch hitting in the ninth. Falco not terribly fast to the plate. The 0-1. Wilmus lays off. Oh, called God. strike outside corner. Jeez. 0-2. <laughs> Sorry. I've had a week. It's my, tough. My, my, my patience cup is empty. I'll check on Mitchell at first. He dives back safely. That's a tough spot for Wilmus, right? Because he hasn't he hasn't really seen that all game. For the, the rest of the Iowa hitters have seen that called all game. That, we haven't seen that one called all game. 0-2 to Wilmus. Just outside. Looked like the same pitch as the last one. Well, and if you're, one Fal and two. If you're Falco, why would you not? You're right. Dot the same spot. I mean, yeah, he missed maybe an inch, two inch farther to the outside. Yeah. But, yeah, I go right to that same spot. Another throw over to first. Stay there, Gable. First baseman kind of faked that the ball had got by him. Mitchell popped up but stayed on the bag. One ball, two strikes with one out in the ninth. Iowa trailing 10-9. Falco ready. The pitch to Wilmus. Mitchell takes off. The pitch is high. The throw down is in time. Got him at second. And now there's two outs and two strikes on Wilmus. Hmm. 
basically a pitch out. I mean, it wasn't outside, but it was up, and so Schliger was on his way out of his stance. Makes yeah. the throw a bit easier. Let him stand up right away. Um, was able to get there and, hey, start the rally now. And two, two balls, two strikes, two outs, bases empty. Hawks down one. Pitch to Wilmus. That's high and up and outside as well. Ball three. And I assume you're kind of doing that on the one-two pitch. You know, your thought is that uh, it's almost a hit-and-run pitch. Um, problem is it's not one that Wilmus can swing at. And so... 3-2 is high and outside, ball four. So now Wilmus is on with two outs. Heck of an at-bat from Wilmus as he took ball six, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Only had four of them called, but uh, good job from Ben to to keep the at-bat going and, and get his way down to first base. And, I mean, hey, you're, you know, top of the order didn't have the greatest uh, greatest midweek. They've got a chance to yeah. pick one up here. Here's Seegers with two outs. Iowa down one. First pitch to him, hit right back to the pitcher. He'll jog over to first, underhand flip. Maryland comes back and wins it. Terps win game one of the series, 10 to nine. Over the Hawkeyes, that's a crucial one. Maryland now 16-9, and nine. Iowa 19-5. and five. Could not get it done today after an outstanding start from Brody Brecht. Things fall apart in the middle innings, and Maryland wins it 10-9. to nine. John, just your preliminary thoughts? Uh, I think you hit it right on the head. That's, uh, you know, Iowa had a couple of those games last year. There was an Illinois game, a couple other games that you look back on and go, boy, we had that one, and uh, I think I think that's one right there. That you know, if you're Iowa, you got to win that. You got to win that 19 times out of 20, and and unfortunately, this was the this was the one that they didn't get it done. Started so promising to really uh, put it on them early by getting five in the first, and then when you looked up in the third, or rather the fifth, it was it was five to three. We'll continue with some post game coverage right after this, but for now, Maryland wins it 10-9, to game one of the series. We're back after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At U.S. Cellular, we think phones are great, but they're not always great for us because while they connect us to so much, they can also distract us from, well, us. The us that actually laughs out loud with each other instead of just texting it. That knows being in the same room doesn't always mean being together. So let's find us again by putting our phones down. Not forever, just for five. Five days, five hours, even five minutes. Join U.S. Cellular in the Phones Down for Five Challenge. Find out more at uscellular.com slash find us. At Oak Mall, our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at oakmall.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! Iowa drops game one of the series with Maryland. 10-9, to the Terps win a high-scoring affair. Didn't really think that that's how this game would play out today, would it? No, you really would have, uh, uh, with Savakul and Brecht on the mound, uh, their respective mounds, you kind of would have thought that uh, uh, you'd have seen a, uh, a relatively quick, relatively easy pitcher's duel, and, and um, Brody Brecht held up his end of that, and a lot of credit to Savakul. I mean, you know, after giving up five, he looked frustrated, um, but he did what really good pitchers do. He kept his team in it. You know, he, he, he didn't give up eight. He didn't give up ten. He, he gave up five, and then he, th and then he started throwing up zeros and um, allowed his team time to chip back into it, and, and his bats picked him back up, and um, they were able to get it done. Do you think that was the one that Iowa thought that they had to win in the series, the one that they felt most confident in winning, the Friday with Brody going? Um, I think they're comfortable in all the spots. Uh, you know, I know that we've switched the, the Saturday starter around through a lot of the season, but um, I, I think there's a lot of comfort there in, in what they're doing. But um, I, I think it was just a um, just an unfortunate ending. All right, Maryland wins game one of the series 10-9, to joined now by associate head coach Marty Sutherland. Coach, just, just a, a thought on, on today's game. 
Yeah, it's a tough one. Um, it's one doesn't taste good, and and uh, you know it's on a day like day with, today with the win, their type of offense. You know, you you never feel like you're out of it, and certainly that's what they felt. They did a great job. Brody Brody was really good, um, but they they battled them. You know, they punched out a bunch, but then in that fourth or fifth inning, they just fought. Had a couple two strike hits. They didn't hit ball hard. Um, but they just fought with two strikes and end up then you get a ball up in the air and uh, you know things went well and um, that's a disappointing thing and you you credit their guy we did a tremendous job with Savakul early but he righted the ship and gave him five more innings after the first when he's basically a hitter or two away from being out of the game and that's what a Friday guy does when he doesn't have his best stuff he battles his butt off which he did and we just we couldn't deliver the blow we needed to deliver that blow in the second third or fourth inning and get him out get into the pen but we weren't able to do that credit to him and you know that to me is the story of the game does it feel like that was then a missed opportunity by not getting him out early did you did you sense that in the middle innings like thinking man we really needed to get him out early or well, were you, you able to group regroup I mean, and you feel good about having a five-run lead but um you know again on a day like today with you just get a ball up in the air that you square up and, and it, it can go and um you know what happened is is they got brody out of the game in the fifth and now all of a sudden we got to get four um and, you know, the, the bad thing, when you have a guy like Brody and the stuff is that electric, it doesn't matter who you bring in next, they're happy. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it yeah. didn't matter if we had Justin Verlander or Jacob DeGrom as the next guy. Brody's stuff is so electric that the, they just lick in their chops like, finally, that guy's out of here. Um, you know, and Jared ran into some problems. He was his own worst enemy a little bit, you know, with some walks and hit by pitches. And, you know, that was that was a problem. You know, we, we end up giving six walks. We hit two guys, you know, on days like today when the, when the ball can get up that way. Um, you know, those are the things that really kill you. So just obviously disappointed. But you got to get yourself up off the mat. This is what it, this is what it's like in this league. And, and they're really good. And we knew that they fought. They battled. They just kept playing, which is the same thing we talk about with our guys in that situation. And unfortunately, they made it. They made another, you know, a, a, an extra play, you know, and they rob a home run. Huh. We lose by, you know, one run. And, and that's a two run homer. So they made a couple plays that were really big. We didn't quit either today. Right, coach? We were we we were locked in the whole way through, just no, kind of ran out of time. They fought at the end and, and ran into some bad luck. And, uh, you know, with Gable there in the ninth, it was a perfect pitch to throw on. He missed up and on the plate. Couldn't ask for a better a better play, uh, pitch to throw. The kid made an, a really nice throw, and that's the story, you know. And, um, you know, like I said, it's disappointing, especially given the start. You know, our guys just did a really good job, you know, with the with the game plan. But to his credit, we, we couldn't throw the blow. We couldn't give the big blow to get him – to get him out of the game he fought and we had traffic right yeah. we had some traffic it wasn't like he was just mowing us down but he'd just make a pitch when he needed to so credit to him and and um you know credit to them for just continuing to fight this is gonna be one heck of a series let's uh regroup and take it to him tomorrow coach All right. thanks john associate head coach marty sutherland on our post game show from Dwayne banks maryland wins this one 10 to 9 we'll be back with highlights right after this this is hawkeye baseball from learfield at u.s cellular we think phones are great but they're not always great for us because while they connect us to so much, they can also distract us from, well, us. The us that actually laughs out loud with each other instead of just texting it. That knows being in the same room doesn't always mean being together. So let's find us again by putting our phones down, not forever, just for five. Five days, five hours, even five minutes. Join U.S. Cellular in the Phones Down for Five Challenge. Find out more at uscellular.com slash find us. After a cancer diagnosis, it's natural to want to start treatment right away. But first, get a second opinion from a team that specializes in your cancer. I'm Dr. George Weiner, Director of University of Iowa Holden Comprehensive Cancer Center. Before you start treatment, you deserve to be confident you have the right diagnosis and know every option available to you. So whether it's with us or somewhere else, get a second opinion. It can change your care and your life. Maryland takes game one of the series in Iowa City, winning 10-9 to today in a back-and-forth contest. The Terps take it, and I will have to win the next two to win the series as we open Big Ten play. Let's go over the highlights from today's game. An eventual loss, but still some things to highlight for the Hawkeyes. Pitch on its way. Lifted in the air, deep left center. Get going, baby. It is gone. Got one now. Ha-ha. <laughs> Keaton Anthony Grand Slam Boom Yes 4 to nothing 
3 1 to Sam. Lifts Ooh. this in the air, deep to left. Get going, baby. This one's long gone. That's a goner. Ha ha, Petey. Boom. Here's the 3 2 from Brecht. Swing and a miss. Got him. What a comeback there from Brody Brecht. 13 strikeouts for Brecht, but the Terps get three in the inning. Iowa with five runs, six hits, no errors. Maryland, three runs, five hits, one error. Tello drives the first pitch to deep left center. Carrying well. Get going, baby. Adios, pelota. Raider, Tello. Boom. Crushed it to left center. Carried well in some light tower power for Tello. Hit it off the light pole. Hawks up 6-3. How about that for an answer? Batter's Kevin Keister. Ball gets away from Moss. He'll throw it down to second to try to get him out, and out. he is out on the retag. As Woods slid past the bag at second, We're back. and Moss threw him out. 1-0 to Anthony. Golfed into left field. Down into the corner. Base hit. Here comes Seegers. He's going to score. Derigi's at third. It's an RBI double. Keaton Anthony not done yet. Ah, Iowa drops it 10-9. to Plenty to highlight, though, for the Hawkeyes. Uh, an offensive day for both teams. Maybe a bit of a surprise this afternoon. We'll look to get the Terps back tomorrow. First pitch is scheduled for 2.05 p.m. John and I will have pregame coverage beginning at 1.30 here at Dwayne Banks Field. If you can't make it to the game tomorrow, feel free to... Tune in to us on the Hawkeye Radio Network. Thanks for listening to Iowa Hawkeye Baseball today. Maryland takes game one, 10 to 9. For my great broadcast partner, John Evans, the, my board op down in Jefferson City, Michael, great job. Thank you very much. I'm John Leo saying so long from Dwayne Banks today. Maryland 10, Iowa 9. Every day's still a great day to be a Hawkeye. We'll talk to you tomorrow. So long, everybody. Hawkeye Baseball has been brought to you by Homewood and Home 2 Suites, preferred hotel of the Hawkeye Radio Network, Iowa's corn farmers of the Iowa Corn Growers Association, and the Iowa Corn Promotion Board. When corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Oak Knoll, an active life care community. University of Iowa Healthcare, changing medicine, changing lives. And by Wimmer's Meats, the official hot dog of the Hawkeyes. The preceding has been a Learfield presentation on the Hawkeye Sports Network.
on the Hawkeyes.